wall not far from wall maybe five meters let's see if he managed to score it's a lot of puddles in front of him swinging that was very dangerous hitting high balls and Irish goalkeeper secures the corner he doesn't, didn't want to do any risky thing he might have tried to save the ball but he was already behind the line so mistake would be more too dangerous so he decided just to remove the ball from the pitch fast release for team of Sweden on the left side and Kasper Sefhama opens the score for this game 1-0 for Ireland that was a pretty nice shot and Irish team it seemed like a bit unprepared so Stefan went with the speed inside the zone and nobody really stopped him and they were like not a lot of puddles in front of him and a shot achieved its aim. So 1-0. It's a uh, Every time it's very good to get the first goal in, in tight games because then not a lot of goals are scored. It's really important to secure any opportunity, to score any possible opportunity. And this time it's Jack Cross. Making it 1-1. One, one. Maybe a bit lucky because he was also staying pretty narrow to the goal and Swedish defender normally should have blocked it. So you would even consider it is a mistake not blocking it. Anyway, 1-1. One, one. Another fall in the zone against Swedish team. Should be... I think Irish team must thinking about being accurate because they might get a card. So I'll tell a bit more about the cards after after this free shot in the center. Number ten High Killer Referees are telling where exactly it has to be taken and he just sends it back. Wise decision if you're not super good skilled with shooting against a bunch of puddles, you always better to pass it back and it happens at any level of polo. Even the strongest team usually pass this type of ball back. Another fall. I think it's already well, at least second puddle fall in the zone. I don't know what the previous fall was. But I think if Irish team continues to do, to play like that, they might, they may get a card at one point. So we will see how it goes. Maybe referee or maybe the coach will tell them to adjust in a half time break which will happen in 50 seconds so the last possession is for Ireland the shot was wide for Sweden 
two players are being sent inside the zone again. Told. And yeah, they want they their aim for the tournament was to secure the continental spot for the Europeans. So even this game is important for them. Even game for place 15 might play a role because I'm not sure who is already qualified and who is not. Therefore, this game also might be crucial for them. Target for Irish team was to get to top 8, but we see that they didn't achieve that, so probably in the next year they have to adjust their preparations. However, they say, they claim that they train once a month since November. It seems that they have to probably adjust their preparations, adjust their tactics, because this time they didn't achieve what they wanted. However, not however, there is uh, plenty of people from who came from Ireland to support their team. I'm not sure if uh, Molly is here, but Molly, if you watch this stream, you are real MVP, you're the real supporter of this team. I respect that. 10 seconds left on the clock, it's uh, meaning that um, second half is about to start. Our team is lined up, yes, and it's penalty for Team Ireland. Yeah, paddle fall from number one, if I see it correctly from here. It is Jack Cross. He will stay outside for two minutes if Swedish team managed to score the goal within these two minutes. Then a power play uh, rule applies, like in hockey. So once a goal scored, our team can go back with five players again. As far as it's not, they will uh, keep playing with four players. It was a bit of unnecessary to do that kind of fall at the very end of, of the first half and also a problem for Irish team for this half will be that they did too many paddle falls and they already got one green card for that, meaning they have to be very accurate in the second half. Probably they might have discussed it during the halftime break. Patrick McDonald secures the first possession for the Swedish team and so this team decides not to go five out, well, let's say four out. Usually when a team has a power play, they would go press, take each player and drive really close to them, not allowing them to shoot, because you can still keep one player in uh, in the goal. And yeah, that's what Swedish team does. They, they put a bit, a bit of more pressure on Irish team. But they maybe were afraid to go full full five out, not to leave any chance, and it it worked. So I think the shot from Jeff Buckley was unnecessary because the defender was directly looking at him and he was ready for his shot. When a defender sees your arms and is ready for your shot and he has nothing else to do, shooting is not the best opportunity. So it was an easy block for Swedish team, and now. Pass to the right, blocked by defender. Will he manage to pick it up? Yes, he does. Another ball for I Team Ireland, and it seems that they successfully went through the, this period of playing with four guys. So it's, I think it's 30 seconds left, and they just need to save the ball and wait till their teammate to come back on the pitch. And now Sweden goes doing five out. That normally should be a good decision because it's very hard to shoot from this position. And now the shot clock is being reset. There was a puddle fall from some of the Swedish players. And Team Ireland is fully with five players now and they still have 40 seconds of the clock. They did actually pretty well during this time. I think Swedish team didn't 
put enough in this period to score a goal. And Tim Island is going with five players again. So two guys are again working inside, it seems, but Swedish team. I don't know if we play 2-2 or not. But the guy on the left seems a bit outside of the zone. Ball with Jack Cross on the left. Attempt of a center pass, but as for me, Mark Hughes was pointed with the back to him. Anyway, they managed to get back the ball somehow. I think a center pass was mm, not the best solution, let's say, at that point, because it, I don't know how exactly Cross expected Skews to catch the ball. And at the very last second of the shot clock, they managed to shoot and get a corner. Lucky this time, but yeah, might have worked different way. Sean Layden decided to sub because he was a bit tired. It's really, really tiring to work inside the zone. So once you have a little bit of time, it's a good decision to change, to, s to go to the sub area and put some fresh arms, pressure on the zone. There was another fall from number seven from Sweden, a board fall, probably he touched the body of Irish player with the board. I didn't see it personally, but it's very hard to notice every single thing which is happening. That's why referee are staying close and really watching closely what's happening. So the next fall for him might be also a card. So both of the teams are, did pretty much a fall. That was very dangerous pass. And also a very dangerous play for Team Sweden. And we have seen a textbook example of obstruction. So when, when a player is in a fight for a ball, another player from Irish team cannot just block it. He should let him free to fight for a position. Swedish ball. Penalty. Lindholm was not really able to pick up the ball clearly, but yeah, Irish team did some fall and I don't know who got the green card. I think this time, if I see it correctly, it's number three shield. And it's the same rule, so it's the same green card. If Molander hits the back of the net, then Irish will go back with five players. If not, we will still have two minutes of power play to make it work. This time he smashes it easily. It seemed like it was not possible for goalkeeper to react for this. The shot was pretty strong. From a lefty, Molanda makes it 2-1 for Sweden. A bit of a pause and the game has restarted. Five minutes left, five minutes and 20 seconds for Ireland to get back. Irish team really smashes with speed in the zone, but the, the Irish always see a lot of puddles in front of him. So. Even though Swedish team was really close to their goal, but there were no real chance to shoot freely. I think almost at every point there were at least two, maybe three paddles in front of a player. Yeah, so corner is the best you can get from it normally. You should get more clear chances. 1-1 one, one is normal option to shoot. All other options are usually not finished with a goal. The, ball, the guy's been number four from Ireland. It's a Brecken. Was being really pushed hard on the right side of Swedish defense. On the left side of defense, eh? on the right side of attack. Anyway, he decided to shoot under pressure. And when you're being pressured, maybe it's yeah, not it's not the best time to shoot. So I think the position was not perfect. But it's his decision to shoot. So. No blaming. I personally wouldn't. 
you can always pass back if you have enough time on the shot clock. Swedish team uh, is playing the four guys outside now with uh, Hekela, Hekela trying to get some block inside the Irish zone. The Irish team goes a little bit aggressive in uh, defense, but they don't have much time left, so they have to score. And three minutes and 30 seconds is not really a long time. They have to regain the possession as soon as possible and try to score. Oh. Molander could have just decided the game, but unlikely for him, he just hit in the post. I think there would be like literally zero chance for Irish goalkeeper to block it if it was in, because it was quite nice shot. So now three minutes for Ireland. Let's see, but if they manage to get something for it, and I think no draw is allowed at this point of the game. So somebody should win this game for sure. The ball goes from the center with the captain number two, McDonald. He swings the ball. Now ball goes to the right side. A lot of pressure from Irish, and they move everything really close. Shooting the ball, managed to get to the goalkeeper level, Lindholm, but he stopped it. And you see a lot of puddles in front of you, sometimes you can go around the defender, but then there is also a goalkeeper over there. And that's why it's almost possible to outplay every defender, every puddle which stays in front of you. Ball goes from left to right. Actually, Irish team seems a bit more active at the end of his game. So I think they start understanding that they don't have a lot of time and then they have to do something. But unfortunately, they lose the ball. So now Swedish possession and Irish team goes full five out. So it's the same tactics. When you understand that you don't have enough time or it's just two minutes left and Swedish team can just kill time, you have to put pressure and maybe lose the ball and try to score there was another obstruction now from Swedish team I explained what obstruction is already so you cannot block other players in a fight for the ball just two players are allowed another fall from Ireland that was clearly a boat fall you cannot hit body of your opponent with your boat and now the task is getting much harder. Once you regain the possession at this time, you ha should have been very accurate with the ball. And now Sweden just have to kill the time. They have 50 seconds on the shot clock and there is 1 minute 10 left. And now the shot clock has been reset. So another thing which you wouldn't like to do during 5 out is making falls. Because the shot clock has been reset. And if the shot clock is reset, another 60 seconds is given and you have less and less time. During 5 out you also can just kill 60 seconds and if you do it really well then your opponent cannot really shoot, you get the ball. 40 seconds left, both on the shot clock and, and game clock, so they both are synchronized. And let's see, a bit of mistake in the pass, number 1. 1-1, one on one. it's 2 against 1 for the Irish, let's see if he managed to score. A bit of high shot from Skews, huge mistake from Lindholm, passing it into the paddle of Skews. And two against one, it's always hard for a defender to defend. It was uh, probably a shot from shaking hands of Skews, but he managed to put it in. And now the ball is Irish, 10 seconds left. Will we, will we make it 3 2? It's 3 against 2. Oh no, it's three against three defenders. One last second, last shot. Oof. Blocked by Lindstrom in the last second. And it seems that we are going to have an extra time. Well, the game gets exciting. I actually thought that Swedish team would manage to keep the ball till the end of the game. But Irish team luckily didn't give up. And that's why we will see extra time. Extra time in a game for a 15, for a place 15, 15th place. Between Irish under 21 men team and Swedish under 21 men team. So another break.
normally the break will not be too long so referees will not give them much of a break time not three minutes this time probably just one minute to talk a bit to drink water and then five minutes extra time The whistle is blown again this and the teams have to line up. Extra time. Pitch four. The last game for these two teams. So they have to give everything they have. It's the very last game here in Brandenburg for them. And they are ready. After a mistake at the end of the second half, Irish team managed to get back with 2-2. Scoring 30 seconds before the end of the match. And the first extra time, Heikela managed to win the ball in the charge start. Now, first possession is for Sweden. And in the extra time, it might be crucial to get the first possession because you might score directly. We see number 8, Lindholm from Sweden sitting outside. I don't know what's the reason, he might have got injured. I don't know why he is walking by by the side of the pitch. Anyway, let's concentrate on the game. So no, Lindholm is out for some reasons. I don't know why. I didn't see exactly what happened. Fall in the zone and uh, Lindstrom with the ball inside. Will he shoot? Too many battles in front of him. Anyway, if you put enough strength in your shot, you can get over all five puddles as i said you win the ball in the charge start and not even a minute has passed after the start of extra time team sweden have won their game for place 15th so the final result for these teams irish team it takes place 16 team from sweden it's their very first competition, so I think we are still very happy with the results because they had a lot of experience and they had a lot of tight games. They never lost 10-0 or something like that. They finished 15th. Congratulations, Team Irish, anyways. Give a round of applause for their team. That's probably a lot of team member, uh, a lot of family members, sorry. Speaking of family, one more time. Thank you for everyone who watched this and especially Molly who supports some of the teammates of Irish team even more than any other family member. The next game on pitch 4 will start soon. I will be here with you watching it and now it's a game between Austria and Czech Republic for for place 13, so it's a bit higher position. Winner will be 13th, loser will be 14th. For those who just joined, under 21 men class this year has 16 teams, which is pretty impressive and nice. Top 8 was defined in the first day. 
This team unfortunately didn't manage to get through the first group stage and they dropped down to the bottom eight. And in the bottom eight there were two groups of four. And in these groups of four, these two teams finished third. I will let you know briefly how did they play yesterday. So Austria was playing in the group with Belgium, Netherlands and Sweden. And Austria actually was pretty close to get through because they get four points and the Netherlands got just five points. So the group was pretty tight. Austria did a draw with Netherlands 3-3, lost to Belgium 5-3 and win Sweden 3-1. Speaking of Czech Republic. They lost to Portugal 12-1. Well, wow, that's an impressive result from Portugal. They won Ireland 4-2. And they played with Lithuania. Yeah, they lost to Lithuania 7-2. Finishing on third place in Group H. So now they, it's the last game for both of these teams. Now we're warming up. It's a Saturday in Brandenburg. European Canopole Championships 2023. Game for place 13 in under 21 man class. You might consider this result are that, are that they are not that impressive, so playing just for place 14. But I have to mention that for team, for under 21 men team from Austria, the, this squad, it's very first big international competitions. By big, I mean world championships or European championships. They never played before in under 21 men class. And they're already not the last, which is a good result when you just come team from Czech Republic is not that fresh but we never seen them before year 2019 where we where we finish 15th which is a good starting point in 2021 in Europeans they managed to secure eighth place which is impressive and the world championship 2022 they finished 13th the world championship where is normally also a plenty of good teams not from Europe we have teams from Australia New Zealand Chinese Taipei and also some Asian other Asian countries so it's not as easy as Europeans therefore place for 13 for worlds is also a good result for pretty new team Last discussions from team from Austria. Team Czech Republic doesn't really discuss anything. It seems that they have discussed everything enough. Both teams are really, really young, even though it's under 21 men class. Both teams average age is 17th and Czech team has some motivational, let's say, occasion at the beginning of the game. So they shout something all together as a team. It's nice to do something as a team. So, as I said, both teams are very young. It's under 21 men class. And both teams' average age is 17, which is crazy. Whistle is blown. Charge start. First possession is for probably Czech Republic, yes. 
I'm not sure who was first, but a player from Austrians number one flew over Czech team member. Therefore, you can. Therefore, it's a fault because you cannot touch body of your opponent with your boat. A ball goes to the right side, number two, a captain on the right side, will he shoot, will he still shoot, no, center pass, actually very nice center pass to number five from Czech Republic, shot was done, but he was not yeah, in the best position, he was staying in the nice position, but his nose was turned away from the goal, so it's not very easy to shoot from his position, prepared, and the first possession after the first minute goes to team from Austria now, They send in one guy inside. I think it's always the same guy. I've seen some games from this team before. It's Luis Fras. Always working in the box in, in the zone of Czech defense. And now the shot from Austria was also blocked. Will he make a lock shot? No. He decides to drive further. Pass to the center. Three bottles in front of him. That's a pretty strong shot, I would say, from the captain of Team Czech Republic, Chernik. And let me present you the teams. It was very exciting first two minutes, I would say. So it's a good level of power. Number one from Czech Republic, Mateusz Eiselt. Number two, Gabriel Chernik. Number three, Franček Chmelars. Number four, Wojtek Bartosz. Another strong shot from Austria this time, but directly into the paddle of the uh, Czech goalkeeper. It was an easy task for him, and he passes it to the left, to his partner. Anyway, number five, Stepan Kortnik. Number six, Dominik Menchak. Number seven, Wojtek Jakubik. On number eight... Sorry, I don't have a name correctly, but it's also Jakubik. Team Austria, number one, Niklas Becker, Nikolas Becker, sorry. Number two, Leo Letna. Number three, Matthias Hatzicka. Number four, Fabian Köhler. Number six, Oliver Haas. Number seven, Daniel Kogler. And number eight, Louis Frost. Coach Felix Kutscher-Lisberg. Getting back to the game, three minutes passed, 1-0 for Czech Republic. Now the possession goes to Austria. The last attempt for Czech Republic was not successful. And honestly speaking, I, would, I was expecting a bit lower level of polo. It's quite decent level for this uh, stage of a tournament, for 13th plus. The shots are pretty strong and uh, yeah. I would it I thought it would be a worse game but it's actually very interesting at this point of a match. A bit of mistakes during the pass. And teams are lining up with four players so Austria playing with four outside and there is just uh, Frost working inside the entire time. This might be at least from what I see the biggest guy in the team in terms of height. Maybe he's the oldest, not sure well. And he's always working in box, bringing a lot of problems for Czech defense. Three seconds left, will they shoot? Shot from Köhler, but he was not in the best position for shoot, therefore the shot is not very good. And a corner. Shot was not very good, but anyway it was near the line, so Czech team didn't manage to pick it up. And uh, goalkeeper from Czech Republic, Eiselt, was just pushed out of the pitch. Therefore, ball for Austria.
It seems that linesman. There is a green card. I'm not sure if it was illegal substitution. Unfortunately, I don't see what exactly referees have shown. It's timeout, which is and the timekeeper forgot to stop the clock. Probably it was a legal substitution. I'm, I did not see exactly what happened, but linesman was showing something. Therefore, power play two minutes for Austria. If you're not familiar with rules of Cano Polo, that was a nice shot blocked by defender number six, Menchak. Time out because the ball went too wide. So the power play is uh, nearly the same as power play in uh, hockey. If Team Austria now scores, Czech Republic will be allowed to go with five players again. But if they're not, they will play. If if Austrian team doesn't score, Czech Republic will play with four players for two minutes. Ball goes to the. It actually was a nice wave attack, so the ball went all the way from the right to the left, leaving Kola one on one with goalkeeper. Maybe angle was a bit narrow and he was already a bit too close to the goalkeeper. He would probably love to have some more space. Anyway, the goalkeeper managed to deflect it. Nice job by Eiselt. Now ball goes from left to right and another block from Eiselt. He's doing a good job this, in this game. Didn't do any mistakes so far. Quick substitution for Austria. Captain is on the pitch, Czernik. Lele has to be on the pitch at this moment. Now the captain of Austrian was swinging a ball, but there was not good shot chance. There's still some time for Austrians to score against four. Check, guys. Pretty strong pass. And another pass mistake. You should be accurate with the passes. In general, you should be accurate with the passes, but especially this time when you, you're you in rush, you have to make every pass very precise. Ball goes to the left side, and now it's number two. Letna finally scored the first goal for Austria. I think they deserved it. They had some nice attempts, and Finally, when you make one after another and they're good, you will score it eventually. And therefore, 1-1. One, one. Czech team is back with five players on the pitch. And we also have some Czech audience here. Not a lot of them, but they're still here. We still can hear them. And they're doing some noise, actually. They're doing pretty, pretty big amount of noise, considering the amount of people being here. Which is nice. Getting back to the play, I think the ball is inside, but Dominic Menchek was not definitely not in the position to shoot. Number three. Will he really shoot from here? Nah. Hit in the net, but from outside. You normally don't shoot from such a position. So it's uh, Khmelat. Being turned, and now. Now he's a bit frustrated, maybe of his shot, or maybe he's just a bit of a sportive aggressive, like good aggressive, trying to push for us from the, out from the zone. First attempt is not good for Austrians. They set up another attack. Four guys outside going pretty wide. I think I like how they start. They start pretty wide, so. Czech team really has to concentrate on every player and that gives some result. Number 8, Jaromir Jakubik. Yes, Jaromir Jakubik didn't decide to stay with a player who went through the center and decided to go to the side because it was wide and therefore Austrian player managed to get the full speed inside through the center and shoot almost freely and that's how it's done. You stay wide and then players have to decide whom to take and then everyone has a good chance to shoot, but personal skill on the left side, who was it? Let me see, it. it's number four, Bartosz shooting over the head of a defender, making it back 2-2. It was a nice, really nice goal. Sometimes you just have to do it yourself, you know. 
And here's how it how it's done. Two two. It's a very exciting and close game. I like so. Also, previous game between Sweden and Ireland in for place 15 was quite close and quite decent level. We can see now a bit of mistake, a bit of mistake from Kogler and Captain Chernik from Czech Republic almost stole the ball. I don't know how did he manage to lose it. He was he gained himself a really really good position. And he would just need to do a few more strokes to pick it up with his hand. 15 seconds left on the shot clock for Austrians. They have to shoot in this attempt. There's probably gonna be a shot from the right side, yes. But Isel does a pretty good job. So, yeah, he missed two goals, but he doesn't do any mistakes. He doesn't uh, miss unnecessary goals. So it's the last minute, last 40 seconds. Will Austrians wait till the end of the time in the first half? Probably yes. Number seven, Jakubik from Czech Republic went a little bit higher, probably to give some pressure. Oh no, you know he stays, he stays closer to his defense now. I thought he wanted to put some pressure on the Austrian team. Two guys inside for Austrian. It's uh, Fras and Kogla trying to make a block. Let's see what do they usually do in the last seconds. Ten seconds left. A bit of mistake in handling again. So I think it it goes random now. It's five seconds. Will they shoot? Check him pressing them out. Pass to the pass to the right side and a really strong static shot for number six from Austria. It's Haas. Probably pass could have been blocked, but number yeah top defender from Czech Republic didn't even think that this pass could come through the zone. And the static shot was strong enough to get inside. Last second shot makes it 3-2 for Austria. They were getting the lead in the very last second of the first half. I think it was really, really exciting first half of the match. For both of these very, very young teams. Team Czech Republic have four new players this year and Team Austria is basically new, so there are no new players. Entire team is new, it didn't exist before. So, decent level of polo for such a young team. For such young teams. So, 3 2 for Austria, and as far as we have a minute of time. I want to note that we also have sponsors, but before talking about sponsors, I want to mention that if you want to check the latest results, schedule and links for the live streams, and if something changes, you always can find all necessary information there. It's usually the most up-to-date resource we have in our Kanupolo family. Kanupolo-tournaments.eu, not com, dot .eu, because we are in Europe. All the information is there. Sponsors. City and State of Brandenburg. Gerus Bau C plus O. Baustrom. Wilman Gebäude Service GmbH. CPS Polo Equipment. Motor Carriseller. Wilks Heizung und Sanitär GmbH. Hidden and Plumbing. I'm a start and wagon und Maschinenbau GmbH, which provided competition with uh, Start time systems and mechanical engineering. You see a lot of IMAS equipment here around. Scoreboards, for example. Stroh Deutsche Städte Medien GmbH, which did city advertising. Hellweg, DIY market. Teppich Bromer by All of Pressure. Carpet sales, carpet lane, carpet care, sun protection. Anything related to carpet, please. Teppich Bromer by All of Pressure. Number 13, Sun Farming GmbH. And number 14 is a private person who donated decent amount of money is Alexander Holst. I don't know who is that, but thank you very much, Alexander. So, we see zero on the clock right now, meaning the second half is about to start. Team from Czech Republic lined up. Team from Austria is lining up right now.
Also starts in the lead after a nice goal at the very last second of the uh, first half. There was zero, literally zero seconds after the shot. Nice finish of the first half for them. Not nice finish for of the first half for Czech Republic. But they will fight in the second half. Let's see the charge start. Czech guy seems a bit. No, it was not faster for him. Nobody managed to catch the ball. But Austrian guy is first to turn back and pick it up. Good job by Nicholas Becker. And also Jaromir Kubik. Nice sprint. But you have to remember for next time that you not have just to paddle fast, but you also have to pick up a ball. A bit of advice from my side, but let's get back to the game. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Timoster just passing around, waiting for I don't know why. It seems the Czech Republic is playing 2 2 defense. It's a bit of difference, so you can see that two players from Czech Republic are staying really close to. To the goalkeeper fighting against Luis Fras and two players were just staying outside but it seems that these tactics didn't really work because central player managed to make pass to Fras without any pressure and Fras easily scored fourth goal for team from us uh, for team yeah for team Austria so it's 4-2 now and two goals lead makes it much more comfortable for Austria so this defense tactic was not at least not really well played this time for Czech Republic. Let's see if we continue doing that. Now there's some swings of the captain from Czech Republic. Ball goes back to Bartos. He shoots and the defender paddles. I don't think probably not the best decision. But now not the best decision from Kogler. You wouldn't dribble it against the... Yeah, against a player of your level, if you respect him, it's either mistake or disrespect or both. You probably wouldn't do that. Gabriel Chernyuk scares Austrian goalkeeper all the time by swinging the ball aggressively. I'm not sure if it works somehow on the goalkeeper of Austria. Nice block on the left side, but too many battles. Ball goes back to the center, but a bit unprecise, so... If the ball was precise enough, I think uh, Captain Czernik could have made a nice shot on the right side. Therefore, it's very important to keep every pass really precise or to catch it nicely without mistakes. Otherwise, you lose your opportunities created and you have only 60 seconds to shoot. Strong shot by the lefty. Who was that? It was Menchuk. I think it was a fall, yes. Strong shot hit in the post by Menchuk. And Bartos secures the ball for team from Austria sorry it's not Bartosz Bartosz is a Czech it's Köhler this time it's Köhler fighting against Jakubik and winning this time because he was basically in a better position seven minutes left Austria is two goals ahead one player inside is it still for us or Frau Frass is resting. We don't see Frass resting very often, but now he is. And now Letna having a really, really hard time to fight against two Czech guys in the zone. So I think Czech Republic still plays 2 2, but it doesn't seem very good because there is a lot of free space for guys from Austria. However, 15 seconds left and we didn't create anything. And now Czech Republic puts even more pressure, giving more free space. Ball goes to the center. Will it go to the right side? No, it's too dangerous to pass there. And now it's a reset of a shot clock for, because there was a fall. On the last four seconds, the fall was made by Czech Republic. And the referee is showing to reset. So, I remind you one more time, who are unfamiliar with rules, you have 60 seconds to shoot. If you don't shoot, you lose the ball. But the 60 seconds are being reset if you are getting fouled. A bad paddle swing, sorry, a bad hand swing for, for a guy from Austria and the ball goes outside the pitch. Ball goes to Czech Republic.
We're shot by number one from Czech Republic, Mellars. Ball goes back to Austria. I don't know, I think it was pretty crucial possession for Austria because it's just five minutes left and they're two goals down. So they probably wouldn't like to lose the ball like that. I think the defense for Czech Republic doesn't work really well because in the second half, team from Austria gets really lots of space to get the speed inside and to shoot. Now it was Kola, the captain, going inside with speed and shooting and it was like really really good opportunity and it was really good shot. A bit unlucky hitting the post. A bit of pressure from Jakubik. So I think they decide to put a little bit of pressure but I think team from Austria doesn't really feel bad about this pressure, they just get some free free zones to get inside and they use it. So far this defensive tactic didn't really work well for Czech Republic. But they don't have much options because it's four minutes left and they have to score two goals. I think this possession will be crucial. If they score now they have, well, it, if not good chances, but they have chances to get bad. But if they don't score, it will be a problem from now on. We'll go Ah, sloppy pass again. Could have been good on the left side. Pass to the center. Three paddles being pushed out. Did he catch a ball? Number eight, Jakubik. Another Jakubik. Yeah. Kotnik from Czech Republic was actually moving backwards from the goal. Still made a shot. Another attempt for Czech Republic, three minutes now, but the ball is still in their possession, so better than it could be. Pass to the center, picked up by Mentak. The ball is lost. Well, these center passes are always uh, a tricky thing, you know. If it's not being picked up, it might be dangerous, but I think it's more than 50% chance when you lose it, that you lose it. And then... You have to really consider if you want to do it. Is it a fall for Austria or Czech Republic? I think it's for Czech Republic. And now Czech Republic is in a really bad position because they got a green card. Again, I missed what was the fall. And I don't see the number. Five or three. No, three is on the pitch. That means it's probably five. Two minutes power play for Austria. So I think now they should feel very comfortable. I think they normally would use entire minutes and should in the last seconds to get a corner. And after that use another minute and just to play like this till this two minutes finish. And after that they still in the lead. Yes, and now you're going to see very, very boring passing around and Czech Republic cannot do anything about that because they are one player down. Anyway, Wojciech Jakubik decided to put some pressure and the pass has been bad so they have to do something but it, it will be very hard because now we have four against two in the attack. Ball goes to the left side and a corner. Well, okay results for Austria. We're completely fine with corner. So that's what I said. It's, it's very tricky to put pressure right now because even though Jakubik forced to make a mistake there was still a very dangerous attempt for Austria, so you have to consider if you want to take this risk or not. But I think they have to, because it's just two minutes left and they have to score two goals. I think we have to go right now. You might miss some other goals, you might lose by high score, but who cares? It's a game for a place, so it doesn't matter if it's 6-2 or 4-2. Another corner for Austria, so Becker gives his team another 60 seconds and now it's one minute and 30 seconds left <coughs> another green card this time it's number two and I, I i didn't see what for this time 
I hope we won't get another one so the game doesn't finish earlier than expected because if third card is given then the game technically finishes with a loss. I didn't see what was a fall, honestly speaking, and referees didn't really show it, or they showed it really shortly. Yeah, I think it's and it's now five against two in the defense with his goalkeeper standing. Another corner. Even though there are three players, Eisel still does his job in the goal, and he does it well. I think now for Austria, they can just use a minute, so they don't really need to score. Let's see if. If they will try to do something. Another player go goes for Austria, for, for, sorry, for Czech Republic now. So they have decided to go five out or four out because they have only four players. But what else can we do? I think it's too late already. So the net is empty and Austria is one player up. So it should be an easy task to secure the ball for them. However, one guy from Austria lost a puddle and he it took him some time to regain it to pick it up. Will there be a shot? Another corner. Another corner for Austria. So, we gotta respect Czech Republic. They're fighting really hard for pressing the four player against five and really not allowing to score another goal. That really shows attitude to the game. They're standing in the goal right now. Ball goes to the right side. Will the shot be made? The last shot. Three seconds. No, they just... no. The shot has been done, but like not really shot. Yeah, Isaac is very unhappy about the result of the game because, in my opinion, he did really, really good job in the goal. However, this time, his team has lost. A round of handshake. So it was the last game for these two teams at this competition. Austria is 13th. Czech Republic is 14th. Respect for both teams, it was a really nice match. In under 21 men class, now we see that guys are playing around, so the fight was hard, but the players are still friends, and they probably, okay, considering we're sentient, they probably have some nice Coca Cola together in the evening after the finals. Maybe something else, I'm not sure, Sprite or Fanta, we will see. So, pitch four. Let me check what is the next game here. So the next game on pitch four, if it's correct in my timetable, should be in women class between Sweden and Netherlands. In women class, there is still two days to go. So nothing ends up today. At 10 o'clock. Sweden, Netherlands, we wait you here. Please come back at 10 and watch this game. See you later. Ciao.
Welcome back to the 2023 European Canoe Polo Championships from Brandenburg. We're on pitch four and the next match on pitch four will be Netherlands versus Sweden in the women's Group G. Group G consists of Sweden, Netherlands and Switzerland for the place in games 7 to 9th place. We have Netherlands on the left hand side of your screen and Sweden on the right hand side of your screen. It's another beautiful morning in Brandenburg. Temperatures have been really high this week for this championship. Not your normal September weather here. 22 degrees already, normal highs of 15. And we're expecting this to rise to 32 degrees today. So warm out there for players and spectators. <laughs> Referees just calling the players to line up. So Sweden only have five players on their team. Have number five, Skagerstedt. Number six, Nystrom. Number seven, Hedland. Number nine, Brett Scheidner. And number 10, Johansson. And for the Netherlands, number one, Lentz. Two, Deval. Three, Brett Brown. Four, Fons Down. Six, Von F. Schultz. Seven, Von de Denberg. And eight, Von Den Marsh. Netherlands winning that first sprint. The shot on goal brought down by the keeper there. Have a direct shot for a paddle foul. Netherlands just moving into place. Lentz to take that shot, but she's put it back out of the zone. And just recycled that ball. Comes back in now. Saved once again. Johansson in goal for Sweden. Good shot there with another save. That's culminated in a corner. <laughs> Netherlands bringing that ball right into the center. Across the side. And that's another shot. Picked up now by Sweden. And Sweden have their first attack of this game. Hedland with her first shot and a goal for Sweden. <laughs> it's 
Sweden just setting up their defence. Two and two defence there. Two players on the front. Two back by the goalkeeper. Netherlands trying to work their way into the middle of that zone. They have done. And that's a goal. And that is Wyatt Brown from the Netherlands. Corner for Sweden. Five seconds or one metre, not sure what the ref was calling that for there. The ball has to travel a metre or with go within five seconds. So, Netherlands attacking again. Using the time. Playing the ball around the centre of the field. Front players looking to get into that zone. That's a great shot there. Once again saved. Apologies if you can't see all the numbers on the players with the sun being so low at the moment. We have exactly the same view as you, so we will bring you the numbers and name check the players as much as we can. And that's another shot from Bright Brown. Number three, second goal for the Netherlands. Oh, and that shot straight down. The middle from Stagerstedt, number five, Sweden, in response to the Netherlands' second goal. So we're all square once again. Looking to make their attack now. Bounces off the bar. And that's an illegal kayak tackle. Sweden turnover possession. Long ball but goes out of play. Just touched by the keeper on the way past. So out for a corner. Out to captain of the Sweden team. Once again, similar styles of play here. Just holding the ball out, looking for that run in. Right into the centre there. Drop picked up by the Netherlands. Netherlands looking to make that break before... 
Sweden defence gets settled. Can they get this shot away? They can. Saved down though by Sweden. Rondenberg blocking the shot and just taking it out to the side. Goal throw. Just holding it up there, waiting to make their run into the middle. Shot rattle right on the bar there and again off the bar. Shot clock resets when the cl shots went up earlier so plenty of time for the Netherlands to recycle this and rebuild their attack. Long shot there. Vandenberg with the shot but back into Swedish possession. Can they hold on to it? It's looking like they've lost the possession here. Legal paddle. Foul there. Netherlands ball. Long shot off the top bar. And once again Sweden have possession. Johansson picking up that loose ball. Sweden just holding the ball out. Long shot, brought down by the keeper, with just 15 seconds to play in this half. What can the Netherlands do? Long ball goes up, but brought down by Johansson, that takes us into half time, two goals apiece. All still to play for. And as the ladies take a break for half time, we'll take a break here and we'll be back with you in a couple of moments. Thank you.
Welcome back to pitch four. Teams now lined up for the second half of this game. Referee calling them back. And they're off. Netherlands winning the sprint for the second time in this game. These teams now playing in a round robin alongside Switzerland for seventh to ninth places in this tournament. Oh, just missed that ball there. Picked it up, but not cleared it very well. Can she get it now? No, Sweden possession. Long ball over the top there by the keeper. Von Hofschlotz in goal for the Netherlands. As Sweden take a corner. Hedlund sends it right out to the back again. Netherlands just coming out of their defence now to chase this ball carrier down. Sweden hanging on there. Netherlands now pushing out from their defence, man for man marking. Looking to turn this ball over. Oh! Paddle foul though. Keeper just dropping back, but that was a long shot from Johansson over the top of the blade and into the net. So three two. Netherlands possession. Sweden have set their defence back up. Netherlands come driving in. Oh, and that's a great shot from Bryant Brown. So, didn't take long to get back to equal terms there. Hedlund's lost her paddle. Referee just waving play on there. Ball over the top, but deflected for a corner. Sweden corner. Hedlund to take the corner for Sweden. Long shot, but that really went awry. So out over the back line. Netherlands. Von Hofschlott. Throwing long ball up. Sweden dropping back into their defence. Three men back, one chasing. Now, oh, and another goal for the Netherlands. Oh, 
for and a long ball back from Sweden in response, but blocked down and out for a corner. Lentz, the scorer of the last Netherlands goal. So, Netherlands just pushing their defence forward a bit. Sweden just running the shot clock down here. Long shot goes. Nicely saved there. Oh, bounces off the bar. Lentz once again in position, but she did have two Sweden players marking her tightly. And another corner. <clears throat> Sweden ladies team. All new players this year. They don't currently have a coach either. And another shot. Oh, penalty. Referee calls penalty. So, Skagastet settles in goal. Deval coming up to take the penalty for Netherlands and a number seven goes off for Sweden that's the captain Van den Berg sorry Heedland if this goal is scored though she can come back on and it is so Deval for Netherlands Sweden back to five. Long ball over. Deflected as that pass went in, back in Netherlands hands. And they get a quick break here. Certainly got one man away. You know, Hansen was back in goal. And that goes out for a corner. Long shot, and that's in as well. That's Van der Marsh from the Netherlands. Taking it to Netherlands 6, Sweden 2. Long ball up, caught by the, the Netherlands player. Sweden and that's oh one half shot just missing 
wide of the target there. Johansson just dribbling that ball up the pitch. Long ball. Brought back down. Dropped into the centre but picked up by the Netherlands. And over. Lentz not having a shot, just putting it back out. <laughs> Brett Brown. Hey! So, holding foul. Netherlands now pushed out five against Sweden. Sweden have got away, that's Johansson. That's his score. Oh no, off the bottom bar. Back into the Netherlands' hands. So, Netherlands, the last play this game, long shot, oh, and it goes wide, goal line throw, so, this game ends, Netherlands 6, Sweden 3, both teams have to play Switzerland today in their round robin for their final place in games. Next game on pitch four is a women's Group E game between Italy and Spain. And Curly will be with you to commentate on that match. We'll be back with you very shortly.
and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to pitch four for the 1040 game in women's group E between the senior women's teams from Spain and Italy. This is the first game in women's group E. Group E is a three team group, the other team in the group being Germany. And this is to decide the semi-final placings. So this is the first game of a little round robin in three. So all to play for for these teams. They've qualified out of their beginning group to come into E. The opposite side of the draw is Group F, which contains France, Great Britain and Denmark. So still in contention for semi-final places, Germany, Spain, Italy, France, Great Britain and Denmark. We have now the first of those round games between Spain and Italy and we will name check those players for you. To our left, attacking the goal on our right, we have the senior women's team of Spain and they are number one Martinez, number two Ermida, number five Romeo, number eight, number seven sorry Taberna, number eight Nato, number seven Cañas, number nine Carmona the captain and they are coached by Eduardo Perez. And to, to our right in the blue kayaks, blue buoyancy vests and white helmets, we have the women's team of Italy. They are number one, Presbytino, two, Matt Zanti, number three, Treuzan, number six, Catania, number seven, Barbagallo, number eight, Cocone, number nine, Buonvenga, Buonvenga, number ten, Landolina, and they are coached by Ciancio. And we were very shortly, this game due to start at 10.40 and I'm pretty sure we'll be underway up to the 140-ish game mark here. I think one game has run behind yesterday. So far everything run absolutely like clockwork. We are on the regatta course at Betze in Brandenburg which is just outside about an hour about an hour outside Berlin. Berlin as I'm sure you're all aware to the very eastern edge of Germany, not far from the Polish border. And we have teams being called to order, referees getting the ball ready. The ball release mechanism ring has been exposed in the centre of the pitch. The ball will go into there and that is released by a pulley system by the scorekeeper so that the ball starts in the middle. I'm sure those of you who've seen Canoe Polo before will remember that the charge start, one player from each team makes an attempt for the ball and until that initial challenge is settled now and the recent changes to the rules, no other player may get involved in that contest until possession, clear possession has been achieved. So, there's quite an important game for these teams. Obviously, if you come third in this little round robin group of three, you fall out into the fifth, sixth places. If you come in the top two, then you determine your semi final position. So, far too early for us to actually tell how Group E will resolve itself, but this is the first chance to see how it might play out. Sure, a slightly satisfying but nervous overnight for both these teams they've made it through to this round but now all at stake really losing here makes it very very difficult to keep going through we're joined i can see down in the crowd by the president of the canoe european canoe association canoe polo committee jean luca zanoni here as a sure i'm very impartial italian to watch this game and we're underway and for spain nieto she takes on catania but the Italian gets the better of her and so that first start cleanly picked up by Catania should be pleased about that Italy get that nerve settling first possession now how long can they hold this for let's see how these tactics shape up Spain have set their defence a classic three and one three in a line and one person trying to stop the runs through the middle just a little bit of work going on there Trevisan for Italy trying to disrupt it but not having really much luck on her own being comfortably held that line by the Spanish as you would probably expect with one driving that line out towards the six meter they're going to have to be careful there but that's a very very high Spanish line keeping Italy at bay and working well for them and that's a great pick up there a little touchdown ball and Nieto picks it up moves it away Cañas yeah, again 
the just a classic start to a game or a little bit of nerve settling Nieto brings the ball away all the Spanish players just getting their chance to get a feel of the match ball all the match balls are identical but every player likes to just get a feel of this particular one just to see what it's like all little traditions really in polo now a disputed ball but this is a battle there we go trying very hard but I think that's going to be yep that's picked up and secured in the end that came down to who wanted it more and on that occasion it was Kogon that's a long shot forwards a little early in the game for that but it goes wide I think that was a very real chance certainly had the legs just slightly to the right of the goal heart and mouth moment for the Spanish but the captain Carmona brings the ball forward she's a big player for them plays in goal scores goals bosses it played very well yesterday in the game I was lucky enough to see and certainly I recall from the world championships last year in San Amer key to their success it's fair to say big pass over the top accurate this is where casual passes can really hurt you early in the game and often for early game nerves lead to that but we certainly haven't seen any of that yet in this game hope we don't for both teams sake but the accuracy important again the Italians adopting a slightly more aggressive defensive style two and two not just a three and one dropping back to three and one but looking to press out they clearly don't want to let the Spanish have time to pass around but that's a lovely inside ball that was fantastic that's Carmona inside to Martinez and that is what the Spanish are so good at they're quite happy to get up very close and feed a ball in prefer that to the long shot and that worked beautifully for them then so that with two and a half minutes gone Spain going to a one goal to nil lead again that's Carm Carmona making the play making there captain's job I suppose you could argue but still done to perfection now Italy star on the attack they're trying the yeah, Spanish line held very very high again and this time it's Mazzanti being asked to drive it back and she has done she's managed to push that line back and create some space inside but Italy not able to capitalize on it yet they're looking but they've slowed it down and that's allowed Spain to get back in position but now Catania goes in two, two Italian players now trying to make this work they had a big open Spanish defense there but it's recycled itself and closed back up and now on the front we've got Nieto trying to stop the inside passes so far so good from the, that point of view and that forces a long shot from Trevisan but it's straight over the top didn't need to be saved and the Spanish come back down the pitch not quite such urgency in that paddling forwards now they've got the one goal lead particularly in the first half teams are so keen to get that first goal once they've got it does they do tend to take the foot off the gas a little bit let's hope it doesn't come back to haunt the Spanish sure not they've got again they've set up two players inside you'll see them working the ball round and they will try and get that in here we come this time it's with Canyas can't see an inside pass sends it back out so this has become very much a Spanish style of play they work very very hard to get it in close and as I say that they take a longer option and the upshot of that is it just goes wide high and wide Canyas has tipped out obviously we're 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 viewing from a very similar position to the camera position so we're probably the best part of 40 meters from the goal here so sometimes a little tricky for us to tell whether it is a goal throw or a corner the referees much closer to the action than us so we trust them to make that decision and sure enough that was a corner again now this Italian line pushing all the way out to the six letting itself drift back into four and a half you can use the marker boys on the pitch if you can see them to judge that distance now Italy being quite aggressive because obviously the goal down St. Catania out to try and chase just to hurry it out and run the shot clock down a bit and as we come to 20 seconds really not much shown in that first period of the shot clock for the Spanish but here they come now can they make something happening Carmona is free inside she loves it beautiful finish hit the top of the net Mas Carmona the captain doing what she does leading by example 
got a little bit of space. I think she'd have preferred to be a bit closer, but still took the option. Shot clock driven, and it was in the top of the goal. So, Spain lead by two goals to nil with just over five minutes played in the first of these women's Group E games. Italy take up the same formation. A very, very tight Spanish defence there. Hard to tell whether... Now, it's moved to a 3-1 and one now, but they just wanted to get that closed off. And again, that definitely needed saving. That would have was hard and high from Landolina, but that would have been a goal if it had not been interfered with by Carmona. She'd just say, that's my job, I'm sure, but still needs to be done. Big, long ball out. Catania, the captain, directing traffic. Where does she want it to go? Needs to be a bit closer to guarantee some accuracy. Takes it. Nicely done. Sweeping roll from Catania there to provide a pass option for a team. Very nice. Now she's looking in. I suspect they'll go to that right-hand side, the Italians, in a moment. But we'll see. Yes. Looking to boss it from there. I don't know whether it's a finish or a pass inside. She's looking for it herself. Well, when the chips are down, that's what you want your captain to do. Kitsanya, you could see her setting that up for herself. Told somebody she was going to be moving in there. And that's the way it went. And she's delivered the goods. So, three minutes 20 on the clock. Italy pull one back. Deficit only one now. As Spain lead by two goals to one. Spanish one inside, joined by another, rotating it round the outside. Again, true to type, Carmona controlling the play, brings it down this time to Amida. Carmona, Italian line, nice and open and aggressive, and it pays for them. A draw, a foul, I like that. They were, they were certainly showing their intent there defensively. The Italians opening out and putting pressure on, and that's paid off for them. And they come away. Very nice work, Trevisan on the ball. Gorgon just letting everyone know she's dropped her paddle. She's quite away from it, just asking her teammates to slow it down. Spain have realised, certainly Taberna has, and she's out putting pressure on while the Sp Italian recovers her blades, but she's done it now. And the Spanish dropped back. They saw a little window of opportunity, I think, the Spanish chasers, but... Italy got it under control, and that's Catania again. Wow, two goals down to parity all through the captain, Catania. Absolutely all on her shoulders. That is a captain's job, if ever you saw it. They were gone down, it could have easily taken the wind out of their sails, and she's literally done that, controlled it on her own, called the shots for herself, and then delivered. Superb play from her. Oh, just a captain's arm, man, just to let everybody know who's in charge here. Beautiful little bit of personality there I enjoyed that Catania on the front dander up I'm sure pumping now we can do this we were two down we were all but out of it a moment ago and now we're right back in this game is this going to sway the Italian way has that changed the momentum not if Carmona can do anything about it let's see some nice passing here they're still going to favour their right but no inside now this is dangerous for Italy is Carmona comes down, she's got a bit of space, close to the goal, can't see a finish, so she recycles it. Taberna running the point as Carmona goes in to try and get a goal lead back before half-time. 1.30 left on this half. Nice play, the point being run by Nieto now. She drops it in. Obviously Nieto takes that role to free up Carmona, but... That was a half chance, and I think taking a half chance, that's great pressure. Let me name check that, because that is great pressure. That was Romeo, who saw the opportunity. The Italian who retrieved the ball just drove her off the pitch and converted that into a corner, nullified any break or anything. That is high risk, high reward, and that's paid off beautifully for Spain as they go into the final minute with possession. Tied at two. Romeo, great play. And outside, Carmona wants to control this for the last minute, get this to half-time, love to score but definitely don't want to concede. Yeah, they're going to run a bit of time off the clock. Just an interchange there between Car Carmona and Nieto, just letting a few seconds disappear so that if this doesn't come off, there's not time for the Italians to counter-attack. 20, where's it coming from and when? 
hard to say there isn't an obvious inside pass that's out to Taberna but somebody's somebody's committed an offence in there it's a paddle foul showing that's an official warning I think that must be for I think that must be for Canyas of Spain but this creates this opportunity oh and that was popped up in the air by Kogana but not getting there she berates herself that would have been a great chance so we go into half time women's group E game between the senior women of Spain and the senior women of Italy tied at two so all to play for the draw kind of okay for both these teams but remember the other team in this group is the senior women's team from Germany so really if you can get a win here that would be much better and I'm pretty sure that will be what the coaches are saying Spain took a two goal lead early in the half and really almost all on her own Catania's pulled Italy back into this game two absolute screaming goals that's not what impressed me it's the fact that you could almost see a calculating chess like how those moves would have come to give her the opportunity and then executed perfectly so we have very little time in the three minute half time for the coaches to give their teams a little bit of extra motivation i'm sure they don't really have too much to do here in a tied game but we will take the opportunity to thank the city of brandenburg and the state of brandenburg for their funding for this event i'm asked for the timing equipment and their support and alexander holtz for some personal um, donations to the event and as usual cps polar are involved and some local motor the car reseller Sun Farming Solar System Company among the major sponsors for this event so for the second half we will have Spain attacking the goal on our left and Italy attacking the goal on our right and Italy in the blue kayaks blue boys dress and white helmets are number one Presbytino number two Mezzanti number three Tevisan number six Catania the captain and the woman who's brought them back into this game without question number seven Barbara Gallo number eight Cogoni number nine Bonvenga number ten Landolina and in the white cacks white buoyancy vests and white helmets the senior women's team of Spain and they are number one Martinez number two Ermida Number four, Taberna. Number five, Romeo. Number seven, Cañas. Number eight, Nieto. And number nine, the captain, Carmona. As the teams come back out at the same time, tied. Both keen to get this one and done, I'm sure. I would just love, wouldn't you just love to be down there right on the line knowing what the last sentence the coaches said to them. The one piece of inspiration they can get. We've got the Italian and the Spanish crowd here shouting their encouragement. And we're ready. Ball release mechanism will be pulled by the scorekeeper before he goes to do his official duties when referee Bracas blows the whistle and the plays are underway. Everything to play for here. Semi-final beckons. The winner of this is almost guaranteed a semi-final place. The loser is in a battle with the Germans. Here we go, this time, Trevisan for Italy takes on Cañas of Spain and Spain win the challenge. Cañas passes the ball off to Hermida, she recycles the ball and as you would expect, Carmona takes charge from the back, passes it out and the Spanish move forward to enjoy the first tack of the second half. Back to a classic three and one defence. The Italians, the chasing style has worked for them earlier and they're adopting it again. I like this. They've gone to two and two, trying to pressure their counterparts. But now Trevisan's been forced out of position by the work of Martinez on this left-hand side, on the side closer to us. All order has been restored. Oh, that is phenomenal. And you could almost guess it when she's not running the point and she moves down. I think this may be disallowed by the referees. I think they may have. I think Carmona might have actually crashed into the goalkeeper, but I'm pretty sure that's the conversation that's going on. Crowd obviously are helping the referees as much as they can here with advice. 
and the two referees just conferring. I think there'll be a question about whether there was an illegal tackle or not, but it may be something else. I'll call it as we see it. I'll let you know what the referees have decided. As I say, we're, we're a long way from the action. They're very close. Let's see which way this is going. I don't think it's going to be a goal. No, it's a corner ball. And that corner ball, I've got a feeling from the way the teams had shaped up, they knew that was coming. Carmona was not protesting that it was a goal. She set up to take a corner. I'm assuming that went uh, underneath. I thought that had gone in. It must have hit the side netting or whatever. Now, again, that's a classic Spanish attack. The inside pass to Martinez and she gets a shot away. Spanish crowd just to my left still protesting that it was a goal despite the fact I think probably not. Taberna brings the ball away from them. Very tight inside for Spain hoping either to draw a foul and a penalty or get a shot away but there we are that's an illegal tackle on the keeper going to have to be careful here Spain because Catania's out and ready to take this on the halfway line distributes it anything that Spain had done to hinder that would have almost certainly resulted in a card and that's a lovely piece of defence that's Taberna got a paddle to that and retrieved it very dangerous situation for the Spanish nullified by Taberna's paddle and Italy are out now pressing them great to see very aggressive what are Spain going to do they're recycling the ball and Italy have broken the break by marking man for man and I'm a bit surprised they're going back to goal now because that has given that opportunity for the long bomb from Carmona wasn't far wide because as Italy were going back to form a standard defence the goal was undefended for that moment and Carmona not under any pressure when she took the pass crowd getting behind their teams now nice to hear so a long way to go in this game seven and a half minutes still tied at two Some great work going on in the defensive line for Spain and the attacking place from Italy. I think the referee there is just saying respect the six metres. Certainly on the very edge of it there. She's called over her meter particularly. I don't know whether that's because she was the worst defender or... I think that might be a bumper issue she's called her meter over because she's called her over centre off and she's just been replaced so I think it must be something technical and um, we can't see the back, uh, back line crew starting to fumble around for tape and stuff we'll bring you the news of that if it becomes relevant I don't think it's a big deal E.T. Landolina coming under pressure flicks the ball backwards to Catania that chase out obviously coming from Nieto Oh, a speculative long high lobby shot. That was Landolina. She'd have been the hero if that had gone in, but puts Italy on the back foot again. They retreat to their set defence. Neither team wanting to take too many chances while it's tied at two. Canyas takes the ball up the pitch. Obviously, this goes to Carmona to have a control the play and she goes down to Nieto who takes the shot goal line throw off the top bar so hard and high but not quite on target needed to be another few centimetres lower and Italy come away yeah it's a bumper issue at the Spanish end they're trying to get tape and repairs onto that not a big deal but a bit disappointing for Amida to be out of the game for a minute or two Again, yes, yeah, some tough going there. Italy just having a look at the coach, shouting some instructions. I wonder if they've got a play to try and crack the nut of this firm Spanish defence. Oh, and they've bumped the keeper. That's what we often call a coach killer because that's a cheap turnover of possession. Spanish will be very grateful for that. Building an attack there, Italy, and then just a lack of discipline or a mistake and the ball turns over so the key to this Spanish attack is really where Carmona is if you can read that you can almost tell what they're thinking who's some yep 
Kanyas has come over to cover the point. That frees Carmona up. She returns it there. Nothing doing. Doesn't like the options. I think at the moment both these teams are a little bit nervous about losing this game. Wonder if somebody's going to be brave. I kind of completely understand that they really don't want to lose this. But somebody's going to want to go out and win it surely. One of the big name players. That would be who my money's on. Carmona or Catania is going to separate these teams. But will it be now or will it be later? Yeah, a little chat about where they're going. That'll be Carmona saying what's going to happen next, I've no doubt. Lovely return and distribution. Is this the opportunity they were trying to? Nieto, no. Nope. Back to Carmona. Got to keep an eye on the shot clock, but they've still got 30 seconds. Carmona drove through the middle, and I'm not sure that the plan could have been that shot from Canyas, but that's what happened. Goal line throw, as I say, suddenly... I was saying at the beginning of this game, neither team showing the early first game nerves that you sometimes get on a day, but now looking very cautious both sides. Oh yeah, here we come. Looking around, making sure everybody's on plan here. Big pass. Oh, again, that's a keeper foul, quite definitely, and that's been, it's been called, I think, against Presbytino. She was looking at the ref as sort of what me looked, but I'm assuming that that was on. I was looking at the play further out, the referees covering in on the goal there. Now, three minutes remaining in the game. <laughs> I can't literally hear it, but you can hear the conversation going on between the Spanish players setting this up. And they've just pushed Cañas into the middle. And now they're playing it around. And we've got Carmona on the left of the attack looking for a space. And it looks to me as if the Italians have woken up to that threat. Every time she comes, somebody meets her to stop her getting too close. Well played. And she recycles it. I think they've realised that in their turn, Spain, and they're trying to draw players using Carmona, but now Italy have won that back beautifully. Can we clear this? That's a massive pass forward. That is a superb pass. There's no other word for it. Under pressure and delivered absolutely spot on to Catania, who then opens the play up. Spain are pressing five out. This is the bravery I was talking about. Who's going to take this game on? Well... Spanish are here, but the Italians are matching this. This is a paddling contest, and beat. if they make some big, accurate passes, they're going to open this up. We're going to have a great last two minutes of this game. This is superb. Mazzanti, can she turn on it? No, can't face the goal. Looking for a pass, finds one. Landolina. She makes a pass, but it's loose. It's tipped away and picked up by Spain. Nieto shifts the ball forwards to Taberna. She looks at the open goal and misses it. Only just that half cover from Pespertino made the difference, forced a rush shot. If Pespertino hadn't got there, I'm pretty sure that Taberna would have taken it another couple of metres and they're still pressing the Spanish. Fantastic. This is superb play from them. They've decided they're not waiting for the game to come to them. They're taking it to Italy. And this is going to be tough now for both teams. It's going to zap some energy. The, uh, possibly the only people this suits is Germany who are waiting to play them both. This is quite outstanding. Look how tightly packed it is. A lot going on as the Italians hope something will happen to get one of their players free on goal. So far, Spain been matching this. This is great play. Hard for me to keep track of the number of passes because they're all accurate and they have to be. Spain pick this up now. It would be very generous. Inside the last minute, but the shot clock's going to interfere here. Big ball forwards, what's happening here? That's a shot, but I don't think that needed saving, but that resets the shot clock surely at 35 seconds. So, there's going to be an Italian corner who's going to see out this game. Is it going to end tied and leave Group E wide open? Italy have the control of that. 23 seconds on the game clock as the ball goes long. Of course it goes to Catania. 16, look how cool that is, a little slip pass, goes as far as Mazzanti, back to Catania, controlling, this is going to be a one-shot situation, 
And of course, out comes Nieto to try and slow that down. The ball's in the air and it's tipped, but it's tipped wide. It's a corner ball. So the first game in women's group E ends in a tie. That's how close it is at the top of senior women's polo. Italy 2, Spain 2. All to play for in the next game in women's group E. is Spain versus Germany on pitch one at 14.40. Just double check, oh no, and Germany, Italy at 12.40 on pitch four. So if you want to keep abreast of women's group E, those are your games. 12.40 on pitch four, or lost it, or 14.40 on pitch one. So women's group E currently wide open tie in the mini groups doesn't help really either of those teams but nor does it really kill off the chances of either of those teams that was a superb game hope you enjoyed that as much as i did we'll talk to you all later
Hello! Welcome here on pitch 4 of the European Championship 2023 in Carlo Polo. We are here in Brandenburg an der Havel, uh, in the state of Brandenburg, Germany, and it's the 16th European Championship in Carlo Polo that we are seeing. My name is Anna. We have almost 11.20 and at exactly 11.20 we are going to witness here on pitch 4 a men's game Group G Poland versus Portugal. You can see that the teams are already on the pitch and they are still warming up a little bit and now going to uh, the team's um, yeah, discussion. In the men's division, we have seen an initial group phase in which 13 teams have been competing in three groups. So Poland started in group B and here uh, reached the fourth placement with three points in total scoring eight goals. And Portugal competed in the initial group phase in group C, reaching the third a place with three points and seven goals. The top two of each group played an intermediate round and are now competing in the second group phase where the teams with the placements lower than two. So um, this is also concerning uh, Poland and Portugal are now competing in groups G and H, four placements, seventh to thirteenth. Yeah, so as I said, uh, Poland had in the group phase uh, three points, eight goals. Portugal had three points, seven goals. So, in terms of points and goals scored in the group phase, these teams have been quite equal. Equal, and I think this might mean for us here on pitch four that we might be having a very interesting game. Yeah. So the referees just called the whistle indicating that uh, teams should be lining up on the goal line and that we are about to start this game here in Brandenburg an der Havel, Germany. Also here on the pitch, um, many fans are already here. So in front of me I have some Portuguese fans, uh, then also I can see many Polish fans and this is what we have been witnessing here in Poland. Uh, throughout the whole tournament, many, many fans, a very good atmosphere and a lot of chanting and cheering. Okay, so players just have placed the ball on the release point, some presents being exchanged. I think this is very, a very nice tradition. So now we see the Polish players lined up on the right side with the white boats and on the left side we see Portugal. And we are starting this game with the very first sprint of the match, Poland versus Portugal. And the Polish win this initial sprint and have the honor of starting the match with the first attack. Yeah, so for Poland, we are seeing with the number one, Bulira, with the number two, Maszlak, with the number three, and with the number three, Mikdajski, with the number four, Roszak, with the number five, Michalets, with the number six, Donat, with the number one, you already said this, and directly Polish player scoring here. At, uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, Poland is starting out this game with an, yeah, really successful attack. Let's see how the Portuguese respond. Just want to continue the introduction of the players. So with number eight we have Kupchak, and with number nine Pilas. Poland again in possession of the ball. Bolira to 
Bulira. So we have two Buliras. Number seven is Jan Bulira. Jan Bulira. Number two now approaching Mashlak. Mashlak. Yeah, to Bulira. Trying to find a player in the middle. Mashlak. Mashlak to Bulira. Back to Mashlak. Bulira. Bulira. And the Portuguese pattern in between. This was Portugal's goalie saving his team. For Poland, we have with the num uh, for Portugal with the number one, Asuncao, with the number four, Bento, with the number nine, Ramos, with the number three, Rolin, with the number seven, Rolin, with the number eight, Mestre, and with the number two, Asuncao. Yeah, so fighting for the ball between Portuguese number two and Polish player. Here also nice, nice disturbance by the Polish on the Portuguese attack, but they are still in control of the ball. Number one for Portugal. Very nice shot, very strong, but defended by the Polish goalie. Kupczak. Poland starting an attack with Maslak. Maslak to Bulira. Bulira, yeah, vote for. Portugal gets the possession of the ball and can start out with an attack. Bento. Bento is coordinating this attack. You can also see his gestures talking to his teammates. Bento to Asunchao. Asunchao with the ball back to Bento. Yeah, high shot advantage being called out here by the referees. Number two and four, Bento and uh, Asunchao are here. Yeah letting the ball move, switching positions to get Asunchao in a nice position in front of the goal, Petro Asunchao. Okay, this is um, I think the first corner of the game. So corner throw for Portugal, performed by Petro Asunchao. Asunchao to Number two, I think, no, yeah. uh, this was Bento with the number seven, no, Rudi. High shot, now pa passing the ball, paddle foul, uh, Portuguese are allowed a free shot and go for it with an attempt, but too many paddles in between from the Polish defense. So, one more time, with 45 seconds left on the shot clock, the Polish are, uh, the Portuguese are approaching the goal. Yeah. So, ball lost, paddle in between, three shots, foul. No, no foul. Corner throw. Oh. Okay, the corner is performed by Rolin. Rolin to Asunchao. But mistake here. Number two from Poland. Now with a long shot. And ball is in for Poland. Maslak. Yeah, so. 4 minutes and 23 seconds left in this very first half. Poland versus Portugal. Poland ahead with two goals. 
still enough time to equalize the result for Portugal and also for Portugal to get ahead. So they are performing a 4-1 attack, having one center player now who is in front of the tighter defense line. Now, Asun Chao! Asun Chao really moved in with some speed, some pressing here. So, successful with that. Yeah, we lost his pattern. Yeah, Polish eye <laughs> on the side. It seemed like this was um, not counted as a goal. At least it doesn't appear on the score sheet. So probably a vote for happening. But now we have a 3 2 situation in the defense. Plus the goalie, of course, on the Polish side. Yeah, Bento. Another attempt by the Portuguese team. Yeah. Okay. So Polish team going for the goal. Here, uh, Maslak taken by two players. Now taking more time, going for safety, not losing the ball. To Bulira, back to Maslak. Maslak to Mikalek. Maslak, Bulira. Bolira! He goes for it from the left side, outside of the Portuguese defense line, scoring for Poland. 3 0. One more time, the Portuguese have the chance to score, and they seem to be going in with two players. Yeah. We see uh, on the right side, Bulira pushing uh, defender out to the side of the goal, left side, right side, now stopping to do that and helping in the other direction. Uh, possibly making a gap for number three, Mikaitsky. Oh. Bento. Wow. Six. Number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now in position. So let's see what uh, the referees decide. As you can see, I cannot see much because the fans stood up. And we see the possibility for Portugal to score. The ball was not inside the goal. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate for the Portuguese team, but they must not stop. So, we are waiting for the referee's decision. Referees will be talking to each other. And this is, I think, something that is great about Carlo Polo, that you have really one referee on each side, so that you can ensure that you have also perspectives from both sides of the pitch. While we are waiting for the decision, the players have already moved partially to the Polish side in anticipation of the next attack by the Polish team. Yeah, so the game started out quite fast. Three goals already in this very first half with one minute and 70 seconds left on the clock in this very first half and now we will be seeing 
um, what the referees have decided together. This is why you what you might see on your screen, the referee is talking to the scorekeepers also. And um, this is also why the time has been stopped. Okay, the goal was given! And as you might hear, uh, Polish, uh, Portuguese fans are very, very happy in front of me. So, here on pitch 4 in Brandenburg Aunahave, we have three points for Poland and one for Portugal. Polish, will they respond to that? So, number seven and number eight are passing around the ball. This is uh, Bulira and Kupchak um, passing also to Bulira. Uh, the other Bulira. Yeah, so 3 2. Inside the zone, we have Roshak and also Pilash. Approaching the Gaono, we're starting the attack, 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Oh, nice defense by the Portuguese player who also gets uh, the possibility to perform a shot. Passes to number one. Nice acceptance by number two. Back to number one who is in front of him. very first half of this game. So, number seven. And Maslak. Maslak! Scoring for Poland! So this is an immediate answer. Oh. And now, this is how we are moving into the first break of this game here in Brandenburg an der Have. It's a men's game, Group G, Poland versus Portugal. Yeah, some exciting scenes already, a lot of goals, and for the fans, it's especially it's exciting when we were waiting for the goal to be given or not. Yeah, the other teams in Group G are Switzerland, um, who has been playing before against the Czech Republic, 7-0 for, for Switzerland. And Switzerland is thus now on top of the group. Um, and then we also have Poland, Portugal and the Czech Republic in this group. So in total four teams here. And yeah, let me talk a little bit about what happened in the group phase, maybe. So, we have already heard that both teams seem pretty equal from their goals and besides there. So, Poland in Group B has been meeting France, which ended 2-5 for France and goals were um, scored for Poland by number one Bulira, Juliusz Bulira. And number four, Maciej Rosiak. Against Great Britain, they played 3-7, with goals for Poland being scored by Jan Bulira, Jakub Maslak, and Hubert Mitalski. Then they also played against Denmark and they won this game with 3-2. Here we saw goals by Jakub Maslak again, Lukas Pilas and Pavel Mikalek. Before, in the Group C, Portugal was facing the Netherlands with 3-5. Goals for Portugal were scored by Pedro Assunção, so this is the number two. Uh, Guillaume Rolin and Victor Assunção. They also faced Sweden and won with two against one, with goals by Guillaume Rolin. Guillaume Rolin, so he scored twice. And they also faced Italy. This game ended 2-6 with one goal by Vito Asunchao and one goal by Petro Asunchao. 
the weather is still nice here in Brandenburg on the Havel. It's pretty hot for um, this time in Brandenburg. 24 degrees. We get a little bit hotter still today. Um, and we will be continuing with this match just right now. So, Poland against Portugal, second half, starting now! Portugal! Yeah, so this was number nine, Ramos, winning the sprint. So Portugal has now the possibility to start out with equalizing the results already. Um, let's see whether they can do this. So number four, passing two, number two, seven in the center. Okay, deflected by a Polish paddle, leading to a corner throw and fresh 60 seconds for the Polish team, for the Portuguese team. For Bento. Bento to Mestre. Bento again. And now number seven in the center. Yeah, doesn't go for it. Back to number four. Who goes for it? Bento for Portugal. And the fans in front of me are very happy. Portugal 3, Poland 3. Very exciting here in Brandenburg and the Havel. Okay, so what will the Polish do? Now everything is really open again. We are basically starting out from scratch. Number 7 and number 2 are letting the ball flow. With number 1 going for a shot, deflected by Portuguese pallets. Number seven, Bulira. Now passing to number one, Bulira. We see uh, the Polish chaser really watching out for this number one, Bulira. But he finds his teammate behind uh, the Portuguese defenders. But they are attentive enough to close the gap. So, Polish restarting the attack. 28 seconds. Still there to do that. Going for it! Jan Bulira with a shot on the Portuguese goal. Went over the ball. Portuguese started! Long shot by Jan Yeah! So, Portuguese goalkeeper was seeing his teammate in the front who directly went for a two-hand shot on the goal. Now Portugal is one goal ahead of Poland. They really turned around the game already. And now the Polish fans are chanting a lot to support their team. So Poland can go for a free shot. Um, now number five blocked by Portuguese parrots, some foul. Portuguese can start out. Number four, number eight, Mestre. Mestre now in possession of the ball, takes time. Passes the ball slightly in front of him, slowly approaching. And now all Portuguese players are in the half of the Polish team. Mestre to number four, Bento, who has maybe switched the sides. Mestre, number eight here. Ah, he decides to pass back to Asunchao. Now we have the ball in the center with number one, who tries a very difficult shot. shot uh, from a difficult angle and gains another 60 seconds for his team. Corner throw for the Portuguese team. Executed by number four, Bento. Ooh. 
Portuguese still playing 3-2 attack, something that is super common. Now finding the center player. Ah, saved by the Polish goalie Pilar. No, Kopchak. Now we also see some switching happening here on the Polish side. Now Kupchak with the ball in front of the Portuguese defenders. Kupchak to Maslak, Maslak to Bolira, Bolira, Kupchak, both foul. The Portuguese can start the attack. And they seem to be going for it, so will they be fast enough? Oh. Oh. Yeah, foul happening. So, good for the Polish team, because no attempt on the Polish goal could be performed. So the Polish fans are chanting Polska, Polska. They are really supporting their team here in number seven. Ah, wow, this was uh, Rolin who clocked this ball from Bolira. Rolin now uh, back in the defense line. Bolira going for the corner throw. Number eight. Ah, too many parrots in between. This was a very difficult one quite optimistic but they gained another 60 seconds and this is what you want to do only one goal is it that they need to do in order to equalize with Portugal Poland now number seven number one Maslak to Bolira to Bolira Maslak Maslak to Bolira Bolira Yeah, so an attempt by Pilash But yeah, also here, no real gap Both fall And Pedal lost So, Portugal We have three minutes left in this game so Portugal should probably go for another goal if they want to be safe and they do it so this was nicely done they, they could ball was with the center player but then they decided to go for the throw from the side angle um, this was I think Player number three, Rolling. Oh! Immediate answer by the Polish team. Yeah, so it, it stays exciting here with us on pitch number four, Portugal against Poland. Yeah. Portuguese, two minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. Number eight, number nine, Asuchao. Number four gets the ball. Nice acceptance against the Polish players to the center. Peter Asunchao scoring another time for Portugal. Portugal is two goals ahead of Poland, but we have seen goals happening so fast here. I wouldn't rely on this. Polish already uh, heavily attacking the Portuguese. 
Ja, he slips through. Number eight, passing ball to his teammate in the center. Ah, number six, Donat. Blocked by the Portuguese goalie. Corner throw for Poland. Performed by Maschlag very quickly. They don't have much time. Hard pass to number eight, to number five. Oh, from below. However, this attempt was unsuccessful. And now we have only 50 seconds left. So what will Portugal do? They will play down the time or try at least to do that because there are two goals ahead. Oh, Asunchao, two. Asunchao. Yeah, so still in possession of the ball, heavily attacked by the Polish team. 20 seconds left. Boat foul. Free shot. Continuing this very last phase in this game. And Poland in front of the goal. One more situation. Manages to win this one-on-one -on -one fight. And now we are ending this game here in Brandenburg an der Habe. Poland against Portugal. 6-4 for Portugal. But as this is another group phase, uh, the teams have more chances to fight for the positioning. As I said before, we are here for placement 7th to 13th. And for those following these teams, we just saw um, there will be a match at 1.20 for each of those teams. Poland will play against the Czech Republic on pitch 3 and Portugal will face Switzerland on pitch 4. Next on this pitch will be a women's game, Group G, Switzerland versus Sweden at 12 o'clock. You can find more information and the detailed schedule on Canopolo dash tournaments dot eu
Welcome back here on pitch number four to the European Championship in Kanon Polo 2023 here in Brandenburg an der Havel, Brandenburg, Germany. It's the 16th European Championship. My name is Anne and we have almost 12 o'clock. At this point in time, we will be seeing here on pitch four a women's game, Group G, Sweden facing Switzerland. In the women's division, nine teams registered originally, played in two groups. Group A with five teams, Group B with four teams, and then the top three of each group progressed to an intermediate round, which decided upon the exact composition of the next groups in the group phase. In Group G, we are seeing the matches of the teams who were not among the top three for the final placement, competing now for places seven to nine. This is Switzerland, Sweden, and the Netherlands. Interestingly, Sweden and Switzerland, so the teams from the game which we are about to see now, met already in Group A, where Switzerland defeated Sweden with 9-3. That game happened yesterday. So let's see whether the Swedish can change this picture and win this time. We are already seeing the teams on the pitch, uh, the Swiss just motivating themselves with a little chant, Swedish still in front of their goal, warming up a little bit more, trying out some passes, referees are there, so we will be starting the game soon. In this very first game where the teams met, the scorers on the Swiss side were Franziska Bartelt with three goals, Zoe Mindek with three goals, Laura Brühlisor with two goals and Nina Luginbühl. For Sweden, Vilma Skadadet scored three goals. Yeah, and in the group phase, Maria Johansson also has been scoring against France. So teams are lining up on the goal line. Three um, green flag. I can see a green flag. So we are waiting for this game to start soon. And now we are starting with the sprint. This match, Switzerland versus Sweden in the women's division. And Laura won the sprint for her team, Switzerland. So the Swiss can now start this match with a little advantage of being in possession of the ball, going for a first attack on the Swedish goal. Prulisawa, yeah, already with the first attempt, deflected by a Swedish paddle, and now winning the corner throw for her team. For the Swiss, we are seeing here with the number one currently in possession of the ball, Brüllisauer, number two, Luginbühl, number three, Mindek, number four, Brendle, and number five, who just did another attempt on the goal, Bartelt. Again, another corner throw for the Swiss team. With the number six, Schmidt, and number eight, Eiger. So Bartet now approaching the goal. The defense trying to pass the ball to her teammate. Swedish gained possession of the ball. But no, intercepted by the Swiss team. Advantage being indicated by the referees. Swiss can start with an additional attack. For the Swedish we are seeing here on this pitch now Number five parted again for uh, going for a shoot, an attempt on the goal. Okay, with the number ten for the Swedish Johansson. Number five Garastedt. Number six Nyström. Number seven Hedlund and number nine Bretschneider. So the Swedish are exactly five women on the pitch. They have no possibility to substitute anyone which makes it, of course, a little bit more exhausting for them. Prilisauer, going for another attempt. Again, testing the Swedish goalie here. Ball being retrieved. 
ไปลูกเก่งพีลูกเก่งพีพาร์ฟอร์มิงคอนเฟอร์ตัดทูปริลิซาปริลิซาว่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่าย่า Really fast, direct shots, very well placed from the corner. Swedish have now the possibility to answer this first goal by the Swiss team. Johansen to playing two Hedlund Hedlund going for an attack. A ball reflected to Skaderstedt. Skaderstedt with the ball being attacked by a Swiss player. Back to Johansen. They have 40 seconds on the shot clock, so they can really take out the tempo and try to start with a controlled attack. They are playing a 4-1 tactic here. Number five, Skadarsted, attempting to score for the Swedish. Ball is going to be retrieved, and the Swiss are going for their attack. Bartet. To Eige. Lugengu. Yeah. In contrast, um, the Swiss are playing a 3-2 formation, so they are really trying to make gaps with two players in the zone. And what was this? This was Mindek. Nicely done. Uh, the paddle of the Swedish goalie was still in between, but the shot was very fast. We have six minutes and 22 seconds left to be played here on pitch number four in Brandenburg an der Havel. Swedish again with the same tactic as before. Now a second player attempting to go in the Swiss defense, number six Nieström. Yeah, not quite successful against the Swiss players. Number eight of the Swiss team is quite attentive here. Eige gained possession of the ball for her team. You see number two with the right idea. Number six in front of the goal against the goalie. 1-1 one situation. The Swedish goalie won this little fight. Johansen. Yeah. So, for these situations, I have been told that you need the nerve. In a 1-1 one -one situation with a goalie, you are often successful, but sometimes not. Mindek performing the corner throw. Bartelt. Bartelt to Lugingbö. Lugingbö! Deflected by the goal bar. Mindek. Bartelt. Bartet Luginbü, Luginbü approaching again from the very same corner and again the goal bar. So these are very nice attempts, but they need to be a little bit more precise. Swedish moving up the pitch to the Swiss side. Rettschneider. And now Hedlund, Hedlund, the captain, coordinating the attack from the side, Johansen. Johansen now slowly approaching Swedish defenders, Brettschneider, no, Hedlund. Back to Skaderstedt. Brettschneider, yeah, so she was in a good position still. Three uh, Swiss players in between her and the goal. Nonetheless, she gained fresh 60 seconds for her team. Corner throw performed by Nistrum. Skadastet. Skadastet to Johansen. Johansen, Skadastet. Yeah, so they are letting the ball move here, waiting for the right moment to start the attack. And it will probably start when we see 30 seconds on the shot clock or 25. Yeah, so they are starting exactly with 30. 
number five to number ten number ten going for that shot yeah maybe a little bit too optimistic there were still many swiss paddles in between however again the swedish won uh 60 seconds this is exactly what you want to do. You would yeah, want, want to go for a really good chance or gain 60 seconds for your team. Hedlund is performing the corner throw. Skadastet. Skadastet. Free shot due to a foul. Johansson. Yeah, so. The Swedish stick to their tactics. They are having Nistrum in the center, but so far the ball hasn't really reached her. So I wonder whether they are seeking to find her or whether they are waiting for her to make more gaps. She's trying to push, for instance, number four, Brendle, a little bit to the side. Keep her position there. She's in front of the goalie. Number five now, Skadastet, Skadastet, yeah, taking out pressure again, Hedlund now, 10 seconds, she needs to do something, and Johansson went for the shot from the very back of the defense. Swiss starting out, we hear the cow clocks in the background, and bow shot. I don't, I'm not sure who it was. I think it was Bartet. Okay, so this attempt was very short. You can be successful with these, but also here you need to be more precise. It's the Swedish turn again. There is one minute left in this very first half. Here in Brandenburg, an der Habe, Germany. Yeah, the Swedish are taking their time here for starting the attack. They have also a lot of space. The Swiss are really, really tight in their defense. Now Johansson and Hedlund went for the shot. So the idea seems to be to um, distract and confuse the defenders a little bit and then go for an outside shot, a fast and strong outside shot, uh, hopefully also in the right moment where there is a gap opening in the defenders, possibly created by Nistrim who is in the center. And now, fast break possibility. Swiss in front of the... What is going on there? Okay, a little bit of passing. Oh, the time was, I think, already over. Yeah, so, a nice chance. We see also here uh, Prulizawa and who is the other person, Langenbühl, I think. <laughs> they are talking to each other, discussing the situation. Uh, no worries, the Swiss are ahead two points at the moment. And this has been an exciting first half here on pitch number four in Brandenburg an der Havel, Germany at the European Championship in Kanu Polo. Yeah, so we are having now two more minutes um, on the break. Let's see whether the teams change tactics or not. Um, and in the meantime, I'd like to thank also our sponsors, uh, with whom, of course, events of this site would not be possible. For instance, the city of Brandenburg, state of Brandenburg, then CPS Polo Equipment, or Teppich Brüma. I'll be back in a minute.
Welcome back here on pitch four. We are seeing women group G, Sweden vs Switzerland competing for places seven to nine. And the Swiss supported by their fans, you can hear Hop Schwitz in the background, are already lining up on the goal line. They are ready for the sprint opening the second half and we see the same on the Swedish side. So, green flags, we should be starting now with a sprint for the Swiss. Brendle is sprint, sprinting and for the Swedish Skagerstedt. Leo, Leo Brendle won the sprint for the second half for her team. Now, the Swiss starting this second half with an attack. Number five, Barte. Barte going for it. No, who was it? Uh, was it Barte? Maybe yes. So they are making no compromises here in this second half. Switzerland three, Sweden zero. Maybe this is um, the completion of the attack, which we have seen directly before the halftime break, which had to end before uh, it could be successfully completed. So number five and ten, again letting the ball flow. And we see some changes in tactics here from the Swiss team. They are now disturbing earlier. So I think it was Schmidt and Bartit really going for um, the ball. So maybe they have changed it to a more ball-oriented defense, but also the Swedish seem to go for a little bit more pressure. Oh, number three, with an attempt on the goal, Minnick deflected by the do lower goal bar. Bartet, Luginbü, Pulisawa, Luginbü. Rüli Sauer. Rüli Sauer, Luginbü. To the side. Oh, Mindek with another attempt. Again, hitting the bar. The ball position moves to Sweden. Johansson now. Moving with the ball again on the pitch. And Swiss are really close. They don't move to their own half. They go for pressure. Yeah, we can see that. You oh, Johansson solving this problem with a long shot to her teammate Skadas did. But now Skadas get fighting with Schmidt. Schmidt also going for Hedlund. Skadas did. Pushed by number five, Garthed. Number nine. Fritzschneider. And now, number 10, Johansson. So now, less pressure from the Swiss. Uh, yeah, so Bartet is going for it a bit. And no, Johansson. Nice attempt, deflected by the panel of Kulisauer. Johansson, with a corner throw for the Swedish team. Again, the Swiss really, really close here. Bartet and Prunisauer were directly with him. Now Prunisauer moving uh, towards Skagerstedt. Skagerstedt. Yeah, but Johansson coming to help here. Skagerstedt. Now the possibility to take some time. So we have two chasers now on the Swiss side, Kulisawa and Bartet, who are trying to keep the Swedish a little bit busy uh, so that they cannot build up their attack as before in a very controlled way, waiting for 40 seconds to pass. That was a really nice attempt by Johansson from behind the defenders, almost Still in her own half, a really strong shot. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah. So, Swiss attack, Mindek. No, it's Lugendu. Lugendu, captain. To Bartelt. Bartelt going for it. Testing uh, the Swedish goalie once more. Ooh, Swedish still in possession of the ball. Yeah, so they are in control. Starting the counter attack with Johansson moving up the pitch. Eiger is approaching, putting some pressure, disturbing Johansson a little bit. Hedlund. Now Hedlund. Hedlund against Barthead. Back to Johansson. Johansson taking time. Fresh 60 seconds. 49. Yeah, they cannot wait as long as before because the Swiss will approach them. But this also leaves some more gaps. Hitlund here with an attempt. Shooting on the Swiss goal, unfortunately over the goal bar. So, now Rülisauer to Lugimbü. Rülisauer! Ah, that looked good. Um, hitting the sidebar. Bartet. Bartet back to Lugimbü. Rüdisauer. Rüdisauer. Oh, and nice interception by Swedish player Hedlund. Hedlund gained the possession of the ball for her team. Now we see Marie Johansson, oh, losing the ball unfortunately. And the Swiss players really putting pressure exactly in these moments when small mistakes already happen. This is the way to go. Yeah. And foul, ball possession one for the Swiss. So successful technique and now one-on-one -on -one situation. Ah, Lugimbö against Johansen. Johansen successful. Yeah, so the Swedish are um, intercepting uh, and preventing quite some goals here from the Swiss side. Let's see what will happen in the remaining three minutes of this game. Everything is still possible here. But the Swedish need to throw three goals to equalize the result. And we see Johansson exactly trying to do that. Deflected by Lugimbü. Corner throw. Execution by Johansson. And she's not waiting for long because they need to use the time. Lente. No. Bartet. Ah no, this was uh, Swedish. Skara State. Yeah. Another possibility now for the Swedish to use 60 seconds for scoring one to three goals. One more. This time the corner throw will be performed by Nistrum. Nistrum to Skara State. to Schneider and back to Skada stands. Yeah, and the Swiss still um, play a 2-2 defense with two chasers that are really disturbing the Swedish players. That was close. So really nice attempt by Swedish player number five, Skaga saved by the Swiss goalie. Now, corner, again corner throw, one minute and 20 seconds left to play, Johansson, Swiss putting pressure, we have Skagerstedt, Skagerstedt against Pulisauer, Pulisauer here disturbing Skagerstedt, Skagerstedt to Johansson, back to Skagerstedt, one minute left on the clock. 60 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah. 
Skagerstedt, Johansen, so they cannot take much time here. Police hour is there to disturb, similar to Bartels. And now also Schmidt is coming to help. Schmidt, Johansen, Johansen! Ah, testing one more time, Brüllis Lugingö in the Swiss goal. We have 25 seconds left to play and Switzerland is in position of the ball. So, they simply need to play down the time, but of course, simply is something that you can easily say. They are approaching the goal. Yeah, Mindek, Mindek going for another attempt. Bartitz doing similar things. And now we have finished this game here on pitch number four. Sweden versus Switzerland. Three goals for Switzerland, zero for Sweden. Very interesting um, match here. Yeah, and Next on this pitch, we will have a women's game, another women's game, which will be Germany versus Italy at 12.40. And this will be commented by my colleague Thais. And I thank you so much for joining us here. And you can also find more information and the detailed schedule on canopolo-tournaments.eu. See you soon.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pitch 4. We have the Germany women versus the Italy women. Oh, match has just got underway. It was Leonie Wagner against Roberta Catania. So, it will be Italy starting with position after winning the charge start. It will be Chiara Trevisan going in together with Roberta Catania. Oh, I'm sorry, Silvia Coroni. So, Italy putting two men in the zone, three around, looking for a gap. This, and it was Flavia Landolina with a fake, and then a shot which gets saved by Germany. Lotta Bendiek making a nice save. So now it will be Italian corner. Corner taken. Ball passed to Trevisan. Gets off the boat, but she still manages to keep it. Now it's Prestipino with the ball. Passing it around. Looking for something. Back to Prestipino. To Trevisan. Pass is a bit short, so German, Germany intercepts the ball. Schmalenbach intercepting the ball. And Germany are now away on the counter attack. Ball goes up to Schäper. Who passes it back out. Referee is indicating there was a foul made, so the ball needs to be taken at the position the referees wanted to. So Germany going in with two players into the zone. Kruse and Schmalenbach trying to force a gap. Wagner following, looking for something, faking a couple of times, looking at a chance to unload the ball into the center. But there is nothing on it, so she passes it back out again. Ball goes up to Wagner again. Passing it back to the center. Ball now with Schrepper. Passing it around. Trying to feed in the ball to Kruse. Gets intercepted. So now Wagner with the shot. We are about 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Which gets saved by the Italian defenders. So, corner taken, passing it back to the center of the pitch. A little too hard, but Italians in the zone, so not much to do about it. Wagner passing it back to Schäper. Looking, looking, looking. Tries to shoot it. And the ball got saved by the Italians. So now it will be Catania passing the ball to Buonovenga. Italy giving their players in the zone some time to get a gap for the players passing the ball to Bruno Venga and she passes it back out again about 14 seconds left on the shot clock so Italy will need to be quick here oh and it was Catania wanting to pass it back to her keeper but she was already on the way to the goal, to be sure. So now, shot clock has been taken off. So it will be Germany ball. The referee is calling a timeout because there is a second ball on the pitch. The French under 21s 
21 versus Denmark under 21 semi final. Okay. Now we are back on the way. It's Rutsen with the ball now. Once again, a timeout. <laughs> I think something has gone wrong with the clocks. So, in the meantime, I will give you some information on the uh, stages the tournament is, is in now for the women's team. This is a match in Group E at the second stage of the group games. This will be for the placement. Getting first into this group will mean a place in the semi-final and second place also so getting third into this group will exclude you from playing the semi-finals Germany having played none of the games in the group just yet and Spain and Italy have drawn one in the meantime I'll give you some information on the pitch right next to me Denmark have scored a 1-0 from a penalty Now German players are passing the ball around to keep themselves warm. The issue with the clock still didn't seem to be resolved. I think I'll use this time to go over the player names. For Italy we have number one, Ada Prestipino. Number two, Veronica Mazanti. Number three, Chiara Trevisan. Number six, Roberta Catania. Number seven, Martina Barbagallo. Number 8, Silvia Cogoni. Number 9, Giulia Buonovenga. And number 10, Flavia Landolina. Oh, and now we're back on the way again. I'll name check the German players for you at a later moment. Now they're playing it around. Ball goes to Wagner. Passing it back to Rutzen. All the way to Kunz. Passing the ball back to Rutzen again. Germany looking for some chances, ball with Rutzen, passing it to Wagner, takes a shot, which gets deflected out for a corner. A really nice save by Landolina, keeping the ball away from her own goal. So now Rutzen with the ball, passing it to Kunz, passing it to Kruse, who takes a shot. But it was a both foul on her. Refs giving advantage, not getting any advantage, so still German ball. We cruiser looking. Oh, and a nice shot from the free throw. Katarina Cruiser placing the ball in the top right corner. So now we have Germany with a 1 0 lead over Italy on pitch 4. Ball to Catania. For the Italians now we have Mazanti and Cogoni going into the zone. Trying to either force a gap for the teammates to come in and shoot or to pass it to them and shoot themselves. Now ball gets pass up to Landolina. Passing it to Prestepino. To Catania. Ooh, nice shot, but even a nicer save by Lotta Bendiek. So now, Germany with the ball. Kunz taking a drill. Passing the a big pass up the pitch. A pass to Elke Vocht. But it is the captain doing a captain's job. Roberta Catania preventing the fast break attack from the Germans. Both of these teams looking at a first place which they want to get it, which they want to achieve this tournament. So both teams, especially Italians, will be looking at a win here. 
Yeah, they can win. Would place them over Spain, providing Spain lose from Germany. Otherwise, it will go to goal difference. Ooh, nice shot. Ooh, and the rebound fell to Trevisan. Which goes out for a corner. Referee is calling a timeout. Corner taken by Landolina. Passing it all the way up to Prestipino. Prestipino passing it to Catania. And back again. So the Italian players letting their zoners giving them time to make a gap. Waiting with the wave attack until they find something. Well, they have to because of the shot clock. Shot clock now on 30 seconds. In those 30 seconds, they need to make one shot on goal to reset it. So, Italians quite happily passing the ball around. It's now Landolina going in, taking a dribble, taking a dribble, takes a shot. <laughs> Which gets saved by the Germans. I believe that was Kunz getting her pedal to it. Now, ball goes up to Testepino again, really dictating the play from the center of the pitch. Italians still giving their Zoners a lot of time to get into their right placement. About 30 seconds left on the shot clock and it's half. Both clocks are now synchronized. So I think Italy will go for one more chance. And then they will have one last shot of this half. Not trying to give Germany anything. Now Italy starting the wave, ball to Pastepino, to Landolina, taking the shot, which flies way over the bar, and we have about two seconds left, so, well, that was the end of the first half, Germany will be taking a 1-0 lead over the Italians, now, both coaches will have the opportunity to talk to the teams, give them a chat, I think, the Germans might want to be looking at a more comfortable lead. 1-0 can be changed around in a draw or even a loss real quick. And I think the Italians will be looking for a quick goal. Which, be, which can give the momentum into the first half, uh, into the second half. Now that I have time, I'll name check the German players for you. We have number one, Jill Rutzen. Number two, Katharina Kruse. Number three, Lotta Bendiek. Number four, Hanna Kunz. Number 5, Svenja Schaper. Number 6, Nele Schmalenbach. Number 7, Leonie Wagner. Number 8, Hilke Vocht. And number 10, Annika Eichert. So, now, we'll get back to you in a few minutes with the second half of the Germany vs. Italy women's game.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, both teams are now lining up for the second charge start from for the second half of the Italy and Germany senior men's game. Senior men, I mean senior women. I'm so sorry. For Germany, we have Hilke Vogt lining up, and for Italy, we have. Chiara Trevisan lining up for the charge start. The ball has been placed in the ball release mechanism which will be operated by the scorekeeper. Both teams lined up now. So, let's see who gets there first. Ooh, Hilke Vogt getting there earlier. But riding over the top of Chiara Trevisan, which is of course a boat foul. So now it's Italians who start the game on the offense. Italy will be looking at a quick goal here to, re to get some momentum to the remainder of the second half. Italy still using the two players. This time it will be Landolina. And on the other side, they have Gogoni trying to create a gap for some space for the runners to get into the game, into the zone. Now, Ooh. that was a really nice shot by Trivizan, which got deflected by the German goalkeeper. Really nice save again. Keeping them alive here. An Italian game a goal now could really turn this game around. So now ball goes up to Prestepino. Italian is happy passing the ball around, giving their players in the zone time to make a gap. Which can be a difficult task against the big strong Germans. Number one, Jill Rutzen, really giving the Italian zoners a hard time. Really putting in some effort. And on the other side, it's Schmalenbach also putting in a nice shift. So, 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Italians will be looking for a wave attack now. Now, ball with Prestepino. Ball up to Trevisan. Has to take a shot. Ooh. Would be a nice pass to Landolina, but it came off the boat. So a bit unfortunate there, but it's now German ball. Schmalenbach getting the ball, passing it back to our keeper. And they, she passed it to Vogt. Almost the Italians getting through it, but they managed to keep possession. Now it's Wagner with the ball. German crowds and the drums really trying to hype up the team for a win here. Now Rutzen passing the ball. Nice goal by Schmalenbach. Rutzen linking up with Schmalenbach. A really nice goal. So now, 2-0 for Germany. Taking a bit of a more comfortable lead. And now we have Mazanti trying in the, going in the zone, trying to force a gap. Ball goes up to Catania. Passing it back out to Prestepino, who passes it to Buono Venga. <laughs> so Italy really using up all of the shot clock <sighs> and a shot from Catania which flies wide so it's now Germany who can go on the attack again oh timeout called <laughs> referees wanting the ball to be shown by the goal line because it is a goal line throw, you need to take the ball where the ref says it. So 
Zo, bal naar Wim Wagner. Passing it to Schaper. En passen ze het back to Kunst. To Schaper. To Wagner. Back to Schaper. Now Kunst is going in. Germany also going with two players in the zone. Hilke Vocht and Katarina Kruse. Trying to force some gaps for their players. And it will be. Ooh. Ooh. Really nice shot by Kunz. But a nice save by Baba Gallo. Keeping the Italians alive. So Germany with the corner. Throws it up to the center of the pitch. To Kunz. To Schaper. To Wagner. Germany starting the wave. Wagner to Schaper. To Kunz. Looking for something. Sides against it. Passing it back out. Germany going for a new set, set attack. Now oh, Kunz to Schaper. To Wagner. Ooh. Wagner tries to sling it around. The Italian defender. But it got saved. So now Germany with the corner again. Really keeping the possession here. The Italians will be needing to look to put on some pressure now because otherwise the Germany the Germany women's team will play out this game quite comfortably. Now, ball to Wagner. To Schaper. To Kunz. To Kruse. Now, oh, Kunz with the ball. To Kruse. Oh, tries to place it in the bottom right corner. But a nice save from Baba Gallo. So Babagallo keeping Italy now alive over two chances. Could have been two easy goals, but she managed to save the Italian team now. A little less than four minutes left to be played. Ball to Kunz. To Kruse. Taking the shot of the bottom bar. Stays in though. So the Italians have some chance to pass it around. Spanish will be looking for a win from the Germans, which means they can draw against the Germans and still go through. <laughs> now, Italy again going in with their two players. Trying to force a gap, they will have to hurry up a bit more than they have already. Now the ball goes to Buonavenga, passing it to Prestepino, passing it to Catania, takes a shot, Ooh, once again a really nice save by Bendik, a really nice save, it was a nice hard and high shot by the Roberto Catania, the captain of this Italian team. Now, Italy really using a lot of time, which I'm not too sure they have. Ooh. And once again, a second ball on the pitch. If they can keep it down a bit on pitch three, that would be great. On pitch three, currently Denmark leading France 1 to 0. That's the semi final for the under 21 men. Now we're back on the way again. So, ball still being passed around. Ball goes to Buono Venga. Passing it to Prestepino, to Catania. About two minutes left to be played. Ball to Buono Venga. To Prestepino, to Catania. 
Make up for Sabino. Buono Vengo. Takes a shot. Shot clock. Was taking down. Takes another shot. It was Julio Buono Vengo with two shots in quick succession. Unfortunately for her, no goals on it. Now, Italy going for attack again. They need to hurry up. They don't have much time anymore. They're using quite a lot of time, which I'm not too sure they actually have. So. Now, Italy might be looking, getting one goal. So the goal difference keeps limited hoping for a big defeat from the Germans on the Spanish now ball pass around to Catania taking the shot which flies high over the bar so now it will be Germany taking I will believe it will be their final possession I don't think they will I think they will just pass the ball around Make sure they've get, got the win. Now. Ball with Kunz. Passing it out to Schaefer. To Rutzen. Rutzen. Oh, gets pressed under. Timeout calls from the ref. Green card for the Italian player, number eight. Silvia Cogoni getting her green card for an illegal push immediately apologizing to the player <coughs> great formership now one second I think she'll shot ball and take a shot immediately which she does which would go down for a corner Germany win from Italy 2-0 on pitch 4 Next game on this pitch will be Switzerland men versus Portugal men. Your commentator for that game will be David McBay. So, this was me, Thijs Brueging, signing off for this pitch for now. Have a great day and enjoy the polo.
Welcome back to Pitch 4 for this men's second group stage game between Switzerland and Portugal. These two sides in a group with the Poland and the Czech Republic as well. And so far, one win each. So, these sides looking likely to be the top two teams in the group. They will cross over with another group with a best possible finish now for these teams of seventh. So this game likely to decide whether they play for seventh, eighth or ninth, tenth. So Portugal ready to go. Switzerland moving into position now. And it's going to be a Sun Sao for Portugal against Stern for Switzerland. So Stern versus Sun Sao ready to go here. Two hands raised. They're off. It looks like Sun Sao has a slight edge on it. He does reach the ball first. He gets to the ball first but fails to gather. So Switzerland will start the game. Stern then managing to take the sprint in the end. So first attack of the game. Stern shaping for the shot. Shaping looks for the inside pass. Comes round to Kubler. Kubler with a shot, but it's blocked easily for Portugal. Shot again, coming from Kubler, twice denied. Coming in again for Stern, Stern with the shots. And that's gone out for a corner, according to the referee. I think it took a touch and hit the back bar. So Stern from the corner. So it's then beating the Czech Republic comfortably 7 0 early in this group, but the ball given up easily there. Slightly short pass from Stern. And Portugal look to break. Asunso back to Bento. Bento taking the ball up the pitch himself at the moment. On the inside, Ramos. Looking to make space for Portugal alongside Asunso. Pass available on the right hand side here to Asun the captain. Goal! Portugal take the lead in this game, 1 0 to them. So let's just see a little bit of the story of these teams' competitions so far. Switzerland men 6 2 versus Czech Republic, 3 0 loss to Germany, 3 all draw with Spain. 5-3 victory over Belgium, 7-0 victory over the Czech Republic. So they've been in the mix with some of the hardest teams of Switzerland. Look around between them. On the left-hand side with the big shot blocked by Sun Sao. He regathers for Portugal. It will be Portuguese ball here. And they have the opportunity to break. Switzerland have left two players up the pitch. Long ball comes down to Bento. Bento across to this left hand side. Back in. Shot coming. Hits the goalkeeper though. Rolin. 
not timing his run or angling his run correctly and collecting the keeper in the process. And a two on one situation is open up for Switzerland here. Hoog has the option for Fergali. Goes himself, takes the shots. Two clean passes there for Hu to share the ball with, and he opts for the shot himself. Probably the strongest of the shooters down the end, but the most predictable outcome as a result. So Portugal by comparison beat Poland 6-4, lost to Italy 6-2. Foul on the inside though, and Portugal will get the chance to break away. Beat Switzerland and we're beaten 5-3 for the Netherlands. So both of these teams have been in very tight games against the teams which have gone ahead into the top of the competition. So we can expect this to be really tight throughout. So almost halfway through the first half here. And it's Rolin. Rolin to Bento. Bento trying to get the ball through but easily cut out by Switzerland, but they've regathered it as it's out. Big celebration from the under-21 Portuguese. That was really unfortunate for Switzerland there. They managed to get the block, but then couldn't regather the ball. And as soon as out, very smart to realize that they had their players well out of position. Switzerland goes for the blind shot behind him, and it pays off. So, Portugal 2, Switzerland 0. And this Portuguese side are a great side to watch. They're very inventive. A great finish there from the captain. So, Switzerland with work to do. Bergeli drives himself, takes the shot off the top bar. It's going to come back into play. It's regathered by Bergeli. But he can't gather it fully and it goes to Portugal into the water. Rolin manages to hold on to the ball. Comes back to Rolin. Two sets of brothers in this Portuguese side. Rolin goes himself, goes for the shot off the bar. It's going to land for Portugal again, though. It's going to be the other opportunity to shoot again, and they do! And it's 3 0 to Portugal. And Ramesh regathering the ball. So, Switzerland find themselves three goals to nil down with only a quarter of the game played here. And already a surprising gap between these two sides. Reminder, this is the Swiss team that drew with the Spanish earlier on in the competition. So, I think we can expect a comeback of sorts here at some stage. Big shots coming in from Stern. Stern, shot coming again. Good blocking though by Portugal. The Portuguese team definitely have the size advantage by comparison across the two sides. The Swiss trying to get behind their team. Stern starts the drive. Ball through. Oh, and a great finish there by Rugli. Lent entirely through his body to get power on the ball there and get a good angle against the goalkeeper. So 3-1 then, and Switzerland get a foothold in the game. Three and a half minutes left on this half. Portugal come through. Rolin, Rolin over to Asuncao. Asuncao takes a shot and scores! And in off the right-hand side bar. And it's just a little easy for Portugal at the moment. And Switzerland don't seem super frustrated. They still seem calm, but these seem like a few soft goals that they've taken at the moment. So Kubler drives in himself. Ball inside to Hoog. Hoog shaping to shoot, shaping to shoot. Four paddles in front of him though. Gets blocked by at least two of them on the way. Paddle foul though on trying to regather the ball. Hoog with an apology. I don't know if that's to his teammates or that he wants to take this shot, but we'll see. So, Hoog shaping back in. Pops it over the top to Stern. Stern regathers, has to pass it back out. Missed time that between Hoog and Stern. That's a loose pass though by Hoog. And he's given the ball straight to a Sun Sao. Very quick thinking by Sun Sao to latch onto that one. Lazy. 
by the Swiss team. And Portugal working it nicely up the pitch. That's a good save that's been made. Oh, oh. Hug then frustrated with himself. That's Schau making the save for Switzerland. Keeping them in touch in this game. Three goals down still for Switzerland. But Portugal seem like the team that are fired up for this one. Swiss fans sensing that, trying to get back behind their side. So, Stern on the ball. See if they can ramp it up for the Swiss team here. Fergali. Props for Rugli. Rugli driving forward, tries to get the ball inside. They need to be careful on the goalkeeper here. Shot goal! Great shot again. That's two in the game for Rugli. And the Portuguese got compressed there. It's a good finish off the top bar though. And that's 4 2 now. So can Switzerland keep Portugal out and get one more back to make this a one goal game? At the back with Rolin, Rolin to Meister. Meister looks like a very tall man. He's almost sitting on top of his boat, it looks like. Meister out on the right hand side to Rolin. Rolin inside ball, shot coming, saved. A few good saves now coming for the Swiss and they need them. Looking for the long pass up the pitch as Rugli takes a touch. Hooged out on the ball. That touch made a difference though from Rolin because the break was potentially on. So the Swiss now. Fergali on the ball. With the minutes left on the half, they are clawing themselves back into the game. One more goal and it will be damage control done on how this half started. 4-1 at one stage. So over to Stern on this left-hand side. Ball pops back out to Fergali. Fergali to his brother Fergali. Playing between them, Shane and Livio. Now Stern on the left-hand side, big shot, blocked. Who's going to regather this? It is Fergali, 20 seconds left. Foul though, again. Portuguese with quite a few fouls. 14 seconds on the clock, 13. I'm not sure whether Switzerland have sensed how much time they have, but they need to move now. Eight seconds then, six, five, four, shot coming. Drops. And Stern with the big shot then at the end of the game. So half time, Portugal starting this game, the brighter of the two sides and taking a deserved two goal lead into the half time break. But the sun, it's currently beating right down the pitch and it will be into the eyes of the Portuguese in the second half. So a more difficult time for the Portuguese goalkeeper to come and maybe some of the reasoning for why those shots went in so easily in the first half. Join us shortly then for the second half of this game.
Second half underway then. And Stern looks to have the edge on this sprint, but he didn't get to the ball first. And it looks for a moment that Ramos would pick his pocket. But Ramos riding up in the tackle and Switzerland do get the ball. So Switzerland, as they ended the first half in possession, trying to reduce this goal deficit down to one. Well, we gathered there. Looked like it was going to go past him for a second there, Fergali. Fergali out to Stern. As Rugli on his right, ups to go himself. Rugli with a good opportunity on the right hand side. Uh, went to Fergali on the left. Fergali under pressure from Ramos, but managed to play it back. And Rugli now for a hat trick in the game. Blocked out. Stern from the corner. Pops it to himself. Ball coming to Fergali. Fergali looking for Hoog on the inside. No option for him. Stern then back out. Stern with the driving run. Pops it across to Fergali. The blind pop pass. Didn't open up any doors though. Ball comes back over the top to Rugli. Rugli then. Fergali. Fergali to Stern, Stern saying to shoot, 30 seconds, go! Off the left bar and in, the big shot coming from Dario Stern. Four three now in the game, Portugal still with the advantage, but from having a three goal lead, it's only down to one now. Let's see if Portugal can respond. Rolin, Rolin to Bento, Bento, pass inside to Sun Sao, Sun Sao, to Sun Sao, blocked. So Portugal at the moment opting to send, looks like two players on the inside, That's Sun Sao and Ramos doing the work there to try and make a gap. Ball will be from the corner by Rolin. Rolin out to Bento. Bento across to Rolin. Rolin on either side of the pitch. The two. Rolin back across to Bento. Bento down the middle. Big gap in the middle for him here if he drives into it. Will he take the shot himself? He does. Blocked. On the way through that shot. Needed to come slightly earlier. Gay Switzerland plenty of time to get their paddles up and follow his movements. Bento from the corner to Rolin. Rolin going himself this time. Bento available on the right. Oh, opened up on the left hand side though. Call came but didn't see it. It's okay though for Portugal. They have possession again. And they still have the goal advantage. Rolin then to a Sun Sao. Back to Rolin. Over. To Rolin on the right hand side, driving down, good screen for him here, ball inside, thinking about the shot, does lay the shot, Mento, it was a, a slow ball to try and trick the defence but well read, not quite slow enough really, they were trying to catch them out but ball comes across to Rolin, Rolin to Rolin, over on the right hand side, to Bento, Bento, not really probing down there, they need to try and work something in towards the middle, this Portuguese side, they have the advantage but they won't be able to sit on it, Bento then, space for him here, 35 seconds still on the clock, the Portuguese players playing very high but now they rush forward and that's nicely done, ah, they made the gap there, it's in south, he backed up and then came forward to receive the pass but the Swiss then away. Who wants the ball in the middle of the pitch here? He's going to get it. Is he going to get the shot away? He goes round the back of Stern. He opts over to the right hand side to Fergali. Fergali to shoot. Goes for the reaction shot. No goal. No goal. They took out the keeper. It took too much time to take that shot. And it felt like. 
felt like uh, Hoog and then Stern could have both taken the shot legitimately themselves as well, but it comes to Fergali who tries the fake shot and then trying to pump it up blind into the net. So decision making on the shot, I think, potentially costing Spain, uh, Switzerland a little there. Portugal then, come again. Over to the left hand side. Ooh, Bento misjudges the ball and he's under big pressure now from Hoog. Hoog getting all the way out to him. Bento doing well so far under pressure but he needs to move this ball. And now it's with Meister. Meister under pressure himself. He pops it over the top to a Sun Sao. A Sun Sao to Bento. Meister making a run on this right hand side. Nothing coming for him. Foul on the inside though by the Portuguese and Switzerland trying to break here but mishandled by Virgili. Don't think he was expecting that ball so early and the breaking opportunity is lost. So Virgili and Hoog inside the Portuguese zone at the moment but Virgili coming back out over the top the ball comes to the other Virgili brother. Fergie and another foul this time against Switzerland at the other end so Switzerland and Portugal trading straightforward fouls likely driving into the body of another player when jostling for position so the ball comes across since out all the way across the pitch it comes to Meister. Meister now playing on the left hand side. He brings it back to the left hand side. As soon as out to Meister, to Bento. Bento to Asuns out. Attack coming now, 20 seconds on the clock. Meister looks to lay it off over the top. Opportunity here for the shot. Takes it. Well blocked by Hoog. with the run across to a Sun Sao, a Sun Sao driving in, driving in, no option coming, Meister thinking about the run, I think he will now come back to the point position, 40 seconds still left on the game, Bento running to Meister, space for a Sun Sao on the right hand side, takes the shot off the bar, a corner called, I'm sure there was a touch there but they're much closer than I am, so a Sun Sao to Meister, across to Asun Sao, Asun Sao running through, back to Meister, Meister to Asun Sao, Portugal now playing for time in the game as well, only a minute and 40 seconds left then, that's two attacks if they play their cards right here Portugal and Switzerland are going to have to push soon if they want to get something from this game. Switzerland are playing with the 2-2 defence so they can afford to punch out a little bit to be aggressive but I think soon they're going to have to push to a full five man press situation. Pressure coming from Portugal, blocked and they have to go now Switzerland. They do push out so they choose to opt to pick out their players so the ball will come to the corner and the pressure from the corner will be from Fergali. Portugal trying to make space between each other. Hoog tracking at the moment with the Sun Sao. Sun Sao going around the back of the goal. Hoog tracking with him. Portugal have done well to get the ball away from the corner at the moment, but they have no passes. It's got to go down the pitch to Meister. Oh, advantage coming. Pressure being put on by Kublo as illegal on the boat. 43 seconds, and this will be the game, whatever the outcome of this play is. It's nicely worked by Portugal. Swiss have lost their players though. They're off their players at the moment. The ball comes up. Stern trying to get the ball back off of Sun Sao. No pass available for Sun Sao right now. He has to go himself. He bends around Stern. 
He's gone around him. Fergaly with the pressure then. What will the Sunsar do? He pops it inside. He does get it to Meister. Meister back. They opt against the shot. It's very smart. Smart play by Portugal. The coaches applaud that. That will win them the game, I think, because with seven seconds left, Switzerland are not on their men. Meister just taking the ball all the way down the pitch. And Portugal do win by four goals to three. And Switzerland couldn't quite make the comeback in the game, having been three goals down. So Portugal start really strong in this game, got a good lead and hold on to it throughout. So likely that Portugal will now move forward to contest for seventh and eighth position. So the next game here on pitch four will be uh, a break. So a break here on pitch four, a free game, and then the next game on the pitch will be 2.40, a men's game between France and Sweden. Thank you to all the sponsors here, the City of Brandenburg, State of Brandenburg, Gerustabau, Balstrom, Willem Gabalna Service, CPS, Motorcar Reseller, Vix, Heising and Sanitar, IMAS, Stroer Deutsche Stade Median, Helweg, Tepic Roma, Sun Farming and Alexander Holst. Thank you, have a nice afternoon.
Hey, 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 Zalu on page four for this game between France and Sweden. We see here now the first charge start won by the Swedes. Really nice in this group game where the first of the group play for the seventh place, the second of this group for the ninth and the third of this group for the eleventh. In this group so far we had one game between Sweden and Belgium. Sweden won 4-1. And now it's the second game and the third game will be played tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock between Belgium and France. Now we have the first shot blocked by the French goalkeeper by Boudel and we have Patronek taking the corner playing the ball inside oh what a sloppy pass so it was easy for Kendik to pick him up and a fast break David Cotta uh, and Baptiste Cotta uh, had just scored the first goal what a nice one he just saw that it was a sloppy pass and then Kendik picked the ball up and threw it all up the pitch to Cotta so we have a result from 1 France, 0 Sweden. And the French formed their defense by a classical 3-1. They have Dueno in front. There was a paddle foul committed, so a free shot for Sweden inside the defense. So Malmog takes the ball. But the ref tells him he has to go further out. It's Padiola but Padoyla from from Spain. And there's a pass inside the center and a shot by number seven. He was not able to pick up the rebound and a long ball from Robert again to Cota. So the second goal in only two minutes from Baptiste Cota, one of the best players in the world. And the Swedish team here is still fighting to reach their goal, their target for this tournament, which was finished first in the lower round. And obviously for the French team it's quite disappointing that they're playing this game here now, because they not you were not used in the past to play games like this in the lower round. They often played for the semis. And we see here now Kindig putting a lot of pressure on Elanson and wins the ball with the paddle, but it gets flicked to Malmborg, the most experienced player of the Swedish team. And he could just save that ball for his team. So the Swedes set up again. They are with five players outside. Sending someone in, so Ellenson tried to give Kinding a hard time. Which isn't that easy. So he decided to push on the center on Robert and another shot is coming deflected by a French paddle and we have a corner and the referee calls a timeout here there must have been something wrong with the shot clock I guess and we have Ogemon in this in the corner So Anton Oigman takes this corner, bring it up to Erlandsson, get put a lot under pressure by Eline. 
and it's again the French they break and you don't do that with Malmberg he's just intercepted this path through the defense and so the, he wants some, some seconds to set up, to let his team set up the defense. And the French playing with one player inside. At the moment it's Kindig. And they send a second one inside. So Kindig gets supported by Richard. And another hard shot. So another goal from Baptiste Cotta. It's his third goal. So it's a clear hat trick here by Baptiste Cotta. And Liné is doing here a great job. He can just avoid that Jotodal go into the defense. But the Swedes are attacking. They try to come in with speed. Faking some passes. Playing the ball back out. Going back in. Pushing in really hard. Giving the ball back. To Malmberg taking a shot for another 60 seconds, but there was no reset. So he complained that the referee takes a timeout. Went back to the table and now the Swedish team got his their reset. So another 60 seconds here for this attack for Sweden. Oh, that was a sloppy pass and Budelal just picked the ball up and a long pass. And back out to Kindig. And back to Richard and a shot on the goal, but it was a boat foul here. So ball possession for Sweden. It seems that they're not in a rush. Another four and a half minute to play in this first half. And another shot is coming up the field. And the French are again in the attack. A pass to the right side out to Cotta. He played the ball back out. To Budelal. Back to Budelal on the, on the post and now a pass deep down. To Donelu. So it was Leo who scored the fourth goal for France. So there's a new lead with four goals for France. France four, Sweden zero. And the Swedish team, they don't change anything in their attack. It seems that they feel pretty comfortable with their plan. Just sending one guy in and then try to put some pressure on them. So there's a big opening on the right hand side and the shot is coming. No pass inside and the ball goes to Malmberg. And it's the first goal here for Sweden in this game. So it's only a three goals lead here for France. But another shot from Kindig, but it was just a bit too high. That means instead of something countable, ball for Sweden. Thank you. 
And now we see the French team is putting up their defense pretty high. It's on nearly on the six meter line. And uh, Linel is putting a lot of pressure on the offense player. Oh, uh, what a pity. Got down near, nearly got over the Swedish boat and won the ball. And the ball is in the center at Monburg. Monburg is in the center, caught another ball. And the referee called. He blew his whiff, whistle and took the timeout. So the referee meeting behind the goal and they have a discussion about what they gonna whistle here. And for me it looked like there was a illegal holding there like a French hand who avoided the shot of Malmberg so let's see what the referee is deciding they now it seems that they have made a decision oh no so Anthony the second ref went back to the first to discuss but now it seems to be clear and it's a corner and the referee shows that it was a stationary hand and it just that Monburg just hit the stationary arm and now we have a corner but Monburg seems to disagree with this he's discussing with the referee even if it's not allowed because it's only only the captains are allowed to speak to the referee and to ask things and now the game is again on and we have a really nice pass inside and again Monburg inside the center but now there was a boat foul on Malmberg so another six uh, reset and another 60 seconds and the ball goes now to Patrone and he takes a shot and the uh, ball gets to the corner at the moment it seems a bit that there's not a lot of intention in this game and we have Linel who tries to avoid the pass inside but Lindbeck just took the ball inside but the French defense managed to push him out so the ball went out so we have Malmberg here and a sloppy pass the French player were able to pick up the ball and we have a one-on-one -on -one between Lindbeck in the goal and Baptiste Gotta and we have the fourth goal for Baptiste Gotta and at the moment we have five France Sweden one and 30 seconds left in this first half so the question will be will the Swedish team score another goal in this first half because now they can play the time a bit down and then go with five player in so they can attack with five guys against four because they don't have to look for the fast break they don't need to cover their goal when they do the right timing that now they all five players inside and there's a shot coming it just missed the goal and so after 10 minutes of this game we have a result France 5 Sweden 1
So the teams are ready for the second half of this group game. We have the sprint here, the charge start, and we have a foul committed by the French player, so that means Malmberg won the ball. And the Swedish team can start here with their first attack in the second half. And we have Malmberg and one on one on the keeper. But what a nice save! What an amazing save from Mounelal. And the French are breaking on the Swedish team. So there's a three against two. Playing the ball around and another shot and another goal. Scored by Robert. What a laser shot here. So the French team taking a five goal lead. And the Swedish team, they still with one guy inside the defense and try to create some openings. They let move the French player through their movement of the ball, but at the moment it doesn't look like it's happening much or that there are any openings in the French defense. So far they did a really good job. There were only two great opportunities for Mombourg to score a goal and he used one. And there was a foul. A boat foul called from Robert. And the ref indicated that that means when he's doing another foul he might get a card. We have a long ball over the defense but you can't do that with Linnell. He just picked that ball out of the sky and now we have a fast break. And a really nice cross to Richard. Huh? And he takes a shot. He flagged the pilot paddle. So, and the ball went out. So another corner for France. And France still a quite comfortable five goal lead. Now they're attacking with five outside, another shot, hit the upper bar. This went into the hand of Malmborg. And he managed it to pick the ball up. And now it's time for the Swedes to break. And a long shot for Patrone. And he just hit that back of the net. What means Sweden got another goal. So, 6 France, 2 Sweden. What a nice shot. Number 10, Eugenio Patrone, he's a, quite an experienced player. And he exactly saw, okay, the French goal is just open. Just take the ball and throw it into the goal. And on the other hand, we had at this moment, Papi Scotta, who just thought, I can do that as well and just took the ball and put it in the back of the net with, a, with his hammer. So the five goal lead is back. Yeah and I want to use these seconds as well to say thank you to some people and companies who made it possible at that this European Canoe Polo Championship can be held here in Brandenburg at the Regatta Strecke on Betsy. And first of all, it's a big thank you for the city of Brandenburg and also on the state of Brandenburg. And there were some more supporters of this event, like Alexander Holst. Or like the IMA Startanlagen und Maschinenbau GmbH, or smaller companies like Wilmann Gebäudeservice GmbH, 
auch Baustrom oder auch Gerüst gebaut hat und auch Or at least like motor car sellers. And now we have a win back from oh and we have a goal line throw. That was really well done by Donio. And there was a confusion and a timeout. And it seems that there was a bit of trash talk between these two players because the referee want them to play sport. Man shape. And now we have another attack from France. And we see here now a foul and Linnell is drifting inside. The referee is calling him back and says, no, you have to be stationary to take a free shot. What is exactly a perfect decision. And the referee, the second referee, so Anthony just told Linnell that the foul wasn't there. And he played the ball back out on the post. Back to Linnell, to Richard. And the Swedes closed this side for Mircea, so he was forced to play the ball back out. And still four and a half minutes to go in this game. As I said before, it's a group of three. The first of this group play for the seventh game. Uh, seventh place in, in this competition. The second one for the ninth and the third for the eleventh. And it's the first or the second game of this group and the first game for France. So in this group at the moment Sweden has three points with the goal difference from plus three. And then we had to add this game as well. So that's why France wants to score as many goals as possible. And we have seen here now that Malmö managed to lower that goal difference a bit. So at the moment Sweden has a goal difference from minus seven and three points. Belgium at the moment minus three and zero points. And after this game France has, when they win it, three points and the goal difference of this game. And we see here Kinding now, and here's a goalkeeper foul. So ball for Sweden. And it seems that they are not in a rush. And Sweden is attacking again. There was a foul so on you, 60 seconds. On pitch number one for the women's under 21. Fifth place, Great Britain versus Sweden. The officials for this match are Asker Sonberg and Julio Abbate. But the uh, French defense is, is just three. insane. They just the put division. up the defense and it looks at the moment the like the Swedes don't Denmark. have any chances to go Edward through this defense or just score another goal Ball here. And three. that's exactly Ball what the French team wants. And there's only 20 seconds left on the shot clock. So the Swedish team, they need to do something. They're forced to attack now. And the ball is going out. Oh, we s what a nice catch from Lino. And we see here now a really nice pass. And a really nice pass back from Linné to Bakti Scotta and Scotta scored another goal. So France 8, Sweden 3.
And still one and a half minute to go. So if nothing strange happens, France will win this game. The question is only by how many goals. Because in the end, it's a group game, it can be that every single goal counts. That also the reason why France is breaking on them. And Richard just put the ball in the back of the net. So another goal for France, that means France 9, Sweden 3. And at the moment it looks a bit like the Swedish team are not in a rush to attack. Maybe they want to, to shoot one last goal or avoid to get another because it's only 30 seconds left in this game and the shot clock is synchronized with the game time and there's a long ball going all to the side to Kornhelm but he loses the ball against Kota and Kota plays the ball again and we have here now a Pass to Daniel and Risha. And Risha with, the, I guess, the last goal of this game. Six, six seconds left. So there's another shot from Monburg. Oh, it just the bar. And this game is over now. So France put himself, himself in a quite comfortable situation with this 10 3 win over Spain. That means they have a goal difference from plus 7. And Sweden has a goal difference now from minus 4. And Belgium from minus 3. But Belgium need to play France tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. The next game on this pitch will be a women's cat senior category, uh, Great Britain against France, commanded by Elmo.
Hello and welcome back to Pitch 4 at the Canoe Polo European Championships 2023. You join me, Elmo, here on Pitch 4 in this second stage group game in the senior women's category. This is Great Britain taking on France. This is the final game for both teams. Uh, Great Britain, they narrowly beat Denmark 3-2 earlier today. Uh, Denmark then drew 2-2 to France, meaning that GB are through to the semi-finals already. So this game decides who they will play. The top team of this group will play the second team in the other group, which is Spain. Uh, the second team in this group will play the first team in the other group, which is Germany. Uh, now, because France drew with Denmark, uh, we get very excited about uh, draws here in the commentary team. You have to start cracking calculators out. Uh, if the French uh, lose here, it'll come down to goal difference. Uh, France, they're currently ahead on goal difference by one. So if they lose by more than one goal, Denmark will uh, go through to the semi-finals. Um, if they lose by one, it'll come down to goals scored. Uh, Denmark have got four goals in the bank to date. Uh, France are starting this game with two goals uh, already behind them. So, for example, a 4-3 loss, if my calculations are correct, uh, that would still see them through to the semi-finals. Uh, if France win or draw here, they are through to the semi-finals and Denmark will be left out in the cold. We will quickly take some time to introduce the players uh, from n France. Number one, uh, Eloise Frigo. Uh, number two, Marion Robert. Uh, number three, Laura Salieu. Uh, number four, Camille Meyer. Number five, Celeste Louis. Uh, number six, uh, Aline Moulin. Uh, number seven, Clotilde Lemal, and number eight, Tiffany Bazin. Over in the British side of things, we've got number two, Amira Conrad. Uh, number three, Eleanor McBay. Number four, Sarah Lanau Madden. Number five, Bethan Littlewood. Number six, Georgie Longbottom. Number seven, Kirsten Lee. And number eight, Katie Howes. You can stay up to date with the results, the schedule, and of course the live stream at canoepolo tournaments.eu. That's canoepolo tournaments.eu. A brief exchange of gifts, a gesture of goodwill between the teams. And we look just about ready to get things underway here on pitch four. Referees call line up, please. The scorekeeper primed and ready with the ball release. I think referee's just jimmying the teams along a bit. We get things underway here on pitch four. Like both sides, they are off sprinting from JB. It's looking like it's McBay who's taking on Eloise Frigo. Fairly evenly matched. McBay just gets her hands to it, draws the foul as well. Frigo parking her boat on the top of McBay's deck. GB now with an opportunity to make the first attack of this first half, wasting no time in putting Littlewood into the zone. Ball starring round from right to left, bypasses completely, finds Conrad. Conrad now all the way back over to McBay. McBay looking dangerous. Sends it to the sky. France now with an opportunity to repost. Long ball up, finds Frigo. Frigo. Long shot off the top bar. Okay. 
The stands are awash with red, white and blue. Over here on pitch four. Britain again moving from near to far. McBay takes it short off the tip of a boat. Needs to recycle this. Long ball out. Finds long bottom. McBay finds Conrad in the zone. Over to Lanao Madden. Lanao Madden. She looks dangerous. Oh! Right bar. Goes off for a goal line throw. like we are adopting a three and one but just needed to get this a little bit more organized I think some careful moving around being pushed out into a two and two Conrad's finding some trouble in for a goal needs to get goal side of it and turn her away from the goal but France compressing the zone right up onto keeper Katie Howes shot shut down by Madden <laughs> Bay just getting turned around there by Frigo. Frigo pushing her backwards, 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 opening up space for uh, Louis. Louis now. Instruction called. Ooh, that's unfortunate from Littlewood. Littlewood is clearly absolutely raging, but uh, still has the foul to take. Just needed to cool some tempers here on pitch four. I say that, having had an outburst of uh, my own this year, I can absolutely understand it if you're feeling hard done by in terms of refing. But got to play to the ref, got to play the game. Littlewood recycles out to Conrad. Louis is ready and waiting for this shot within the next 25 seconds left on the shot clock. Great Britain on the attack, Conrad needs to find a friend. Oh, pass not quite finding the hands of Lanao Madden, but not punished. Conrad gets her hands to it. GB needing to reset this. I think there's some flavour of protest coming from the French side of things. I think just timing out while the referees clarify a couple of things with the table. France using this opportunity to put Aline Roulon in the middle position of the three and one and bring Frigo out to the top. GB similarly using this break and play to take off McBay and bring on uh, I think some sort of technical issue there which has just been resolved. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Big calls of a little bleu from in front of my commentary tent. Ball into the centre, not quite fine in the hands of Conrad, picked up by Roulant. Roulant manages to chest pass away. Long shot. I think that was actually intended for Lamal. Not quite fine in the hands and giving away a kayaking uh, tackle foul. Now Madden wastes no time in trying to sit under the French goal, but is uh, being swiftly ejected by Frigo as we speak. Littlewood takes it wide. Lovely ball into Lanao Madden, but finds herself with paddles in her face. Chooses to recycle it all the way back out to Howes. I think gesture from Howes there with a the head say, right, out you get. Come on, let's reset this properly. Howes again. Shots! Hail Mary from Howes pays off. 
Great Britain on the board. Great Britain won. France sitting on a duck egg. Come on, GB. How will the French respond to that? A very experienced team, the French. Many of these names I have said on many an occasion. Now, oh, again, just that, that passing, just going a little bit wide. Not where we need it. Lovely ball into the zone. Kayak tackle on steady, sir. Entire paddle foul. Just paddles looking a little close there. That's a warning, I think, for number six, long bottom for the paddle foul. I think she's done done all right to get away without a penalty there, honestly. Just getting the player in position. Once again, I think a Roulon just being instructed to try and get in, but Great Britain not yielding. Monstrous. Oh, not a goal. Have yet. Haven't timed back in yet. I think completely reasonable. If the referee hasn't restarted the game, referee hasn't restarted the game, you'll have to have another go. Bad luck. Very unpopular, I assume, if this is saved. Woo! Yeah, the French supporters are not happy about that at all. Lee punches out, as does Conrad. Goes to give uh, Mayer something to think about. Not quite fine in the hands of Selyu, but she's recovered it. Again, Great Britain looking like they really, really want to punch here. Robert, under pressure, holds it, manages to find Mayer. Mayer! Massive cheer from the French. Persistence pays off here on pitch four. Great Britain won, France won. And I make that three minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock. Still very much all to play for. If you're just joining us here, please note Great Britain, they are actually already through to the semi-finals. This simply determines who they play. If they can top the group, they will play Spain. If they come second by losing to the French here, they will play Germany. Bay making space, Littlewood's running left. Lee finds Littlewood, and recycles out immediately. Zone on the far side being compressed all the way in, but finding some issues in the form of Salyu. Slightly challenging pass there, turning the ball over to the French. Frigo bringing the ball long up the pitch, long pass, finds Tiffany Bazin. Loopy shots off the bottom bar. Lee will be furious with that. Just out of her reach. Unfortunate for Lee, but what a shot from France. Beautiful work. France 2, Great Britain 1. Great Britain need to keep their heads up here. I think the uh, loser plays Germany question. Yep, enough of a threat that uh, Lanau Madden says, nope, have it back. Great Britain 2, France 2. Yeah, definitely paddle fouls. Paddle's getting involved when reaching for the ball. It is dangerous. How's just holding the ball while we bring on Littlewood. Yeah. 
Conrad in the zone trying to make some space. And start the start on the near side. Howes bypasses, goes all the way to Littlewood, to McBay. Surely he's going to recycle there. She's facing the wrong way. Yep. The French zone holding firm. Lee takes it in herself. Needs to find a pass in the zone. Yep. Finds McBay. McBay shut down. And the French now on the break. Howes can't get back fast enough. There are three French boats staring her down. That's all she can do. France three, Great Britain two, and I think just an overcommitment there from the GB team. Leaving Howes with an impossible task. 57 seconds left on the clock. Still plenty of time for a rebuttal from the Brits. And now Madden, looking like she wants it, Little Wood. Goes off for a corner. And now Madden to take. Scratch that, Little Wood to take. Now Madden's gonna come in from behind the zone and sit in front of the zone. Big calls a little blue, 20 seconds left. McBay now with an opportunity. Shot, shut down. Lemal, long ball up, 13 seconds still, an absolute age of Gnu Polo terms. Opportunity now. Oh, big shot, top bar. A blessing for the Brits. I think Kirsten Lee very wisely just holding on to that. Damage limitation. What an excellent first half of canoe polo. So, if you're just joining us here on pitch four, France three, Great Britain two. The French, if they win this, they will top the group and they will go through to the semis to play Spain. If the British win this, they will top the group and go through to play Spain. British uh, will still go uh, through regardless of the result. If they come second in the group uh, by losing this game, they will end up playing Germany, which uh, don't need to tell you, probably not anyone's favourite option. Of course, you can keep up with all of the scores, uh, the results, the schedule, the live stream, all at canoepolo-tournaments.eu. There's a link there for the Tournify app, which is absolutely wonderful if you want to stay up to date. We'll just thank our sponsors, the City of Brandenburg, the State of Brandenburg, uh, Gerusbau ZNO, Baustrom, Wilman Gebäud Servicer, uh, CPS Polo Equipment, uh, Mother Car Reseller, Quilks Heizung and Sanitaire, uh, IMAS, uh, Stadtenlagen und Maschinenbau, uh, Stö Deutsche Städte Medien, Helweg, uh, Teppich Brömer, Olaf Prescher, Sun Farming and Alexander Hurst. So now, if because France have scored three goals, if I've got this right, even if they draw here, they will still remove Denmark from any chance of the semis. Um, if they, even if they lose by one now, um, Denmark is still out. Uh, if they lose by one, it comes down to. Uh, goal difference, which they'd be equal on, uh, and then uh, goals scored, which the French now have beaten the Danish. The Danish only have four in the bank. Uh, the French came into this game with two, uh, and they've just scored three, so Denmark are out. They're off. 
sprinting from uh, France is Aline Roulant taking on McBay. Roulant gets there with time to spare, turns the boat away and just controls the ball in the process. Always a little bit difficult when you find yourself on your opponent's deck. Firstly, to have control of the ball. Secondly, to not give away the foul. Roulant. All the way back out to Salut. Yeah, Ooh, fancy. Over to Mayer. Swatted away. Stopped decisively by McBay, just shutting down that pass around the zone. Beautiful work. The French very effectively covering Lee, who was breaking up the pitch. Long shot, goes to space. Not an unreasonable decision. There was no keeper, and Howes can make that shot. I've seen her do it from close quarters. Big calls of a little bleu from in front of me. Into the zone goes Camille Mayer and Marion Rebel. They're going to try and make some space. Britain answering this with a two and two. That pass not quite finding its way through the zone. Finds itself in the hands of Howes, then Lee. Drawing the paddle foul. McBay's moving up the pitch. She's on her own. She's just going to keep this. Robel needs to commit to her. Oh, leaning foul. Yep, agree with that. Great use. Opportunity now for Conrad. I think Conrad attending to draw the paddle foul there, felt that paddle was too close. Conrad, back in action, taking on Aline Moulin. French zone holding firm, but some ingress now in the form of Lee, just needs to get her hands to it. Loopy pass over, finds Lamal. Lamal under fire from Lee. Manages to get the ball away. Lui finds Roulant. Roulant over to Bazin. The French just turning around. There's no hurry here. 23 seconds left on the shot clock, still all to play for. Roulant. Oh, that's how it's done. Tidy passes, tidy goals. Celeste Lui widening this gap in front of the Brits. France 4, Great Britain 2. I think Great Britain are really going to have to find something here if they want to avoid playing Germany in the semi finals. And now Madden takes it in, and again, does that pass in the zone, not finding its intended target. Littlewood turns to go and give Roulon some grief. Long ball up to Lamal. Lamal needs to find Bazin. Finds her shot now. Loop. Trying the slow ball, but just finding that near side bar. Long ball up. Missed by Littlewood, but picked up by Conrad. McBay on her own, steaming in. Shot. Off for a corner.
I think just the referees asking the now Madden back up some into the corner. And now Madden takes it short. McVay takes the hand paddle in. Oh, Conrad. She looks dangerous. Again, finding an umbrella of paddles on her. Littlewood chasing down Salyu, who has gone. Longbottom taking on Frigo. Turning around. Britain looking like they are pushing for the five man press and they need it if they are going to turn this around. Littlewood absolutely hammering Salyu. Almost drawing the five seconds, but McBay not quite getting her hands to it. Needs to get there and turn her paddles round it. Resists the push. Great work by McBay. Five man press pays off for Great Britain. Needing to tidy this passing up once again. Long bottom, she looks dangerous. Conrad's in. All the way across. Finds McBay. Ooh. Proper opportunity for Great Britain there. Wonderful movement and great passing through the zone. Littlewood's trying to find some purchase. McBay again. She's unchallenged. Yeah! Wonderful. Oh, yes! Eleanor McBay for Great Britain closes the gap. Great Britain three, France four. Great Britain just making some tactical substitutions, taking off McBay and bringing on Lee. Lee, excellent chasing game. She's one you want if you've got a goal down. Little Woods can make this pass every day of the week. Oh, commentator's curse. Now, interesting. Green card for number four from France, Camille Mayer. So France now down to four boats. Opportunity for Great Britain now to equalize. I'm afraid I didn't see what that was for. But uh, needless to say, Mayer is two minutes in the sin bin. Conrad. Howes all the way across to Littlewood. Just needs to keep that under control. And this French zone being compressed all the way onto the keeper and giving Britain shooters much more room to manoeuvre. Littlewood now. Oh! Hammered away by Roulon. Difficult shot to make from that angle. Very, very narrow goal face. And now Madden back to Conrad. And now Madden. I think big calls from the Brits to recycle. They do need to be starting this attack all the way out again if they're going to be coming out with any sort of speed. Question mark for. Yeah. Ooh. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. I think Littlewood disagrees with the referees uh, regarding the obstruction call there. Once again, GB with a five-man press. Well, four-man press and a keeper. They were both up. The now Madden needs to hold on to Lamal. Can't have room to manoeuvre. I think some um, communication issues now over who's got who. Lee. Hammering Roulant, trying to push her off the pitch. Needs to be careful not to paddle onto the deck. Long ball up, finds Lamal. France need to run here. Lamal needs to turn. And France, they just need to hold this for, I think, yes, now. They are back up to five, so McBay's going to have to come up and give her team a hand. 
It's now five boats apiece. McBain needs to pick a player. I think, again, there's been some communication issues over who's got who. The French just need to hold this for another 40 seconds. Long ball up, finds Mayer. Mayer being pushed heavily by Conrad. They just need to hold it for 30 seconds. Ball over the top, opportunity now for France. France, Lamal, nail in the coffin. France five, Great Britain three. Great Britain immediately with an answer. 20 seconds left to go. Tries to find the pass in the zone, needs another friend, needs another runner really. Roulant just needs to hold this. They just need to hold it for nine seconds. McBay trying to push Louis off the pitch. Robert, one second left. That is it here. France. France taking the lead. So they will go through to the semis and play Spain. Great Britain to play Germany. Very respectable finishes for both of these teams, particularly the British. I think this is the best finish they've had in some time. Uh, the team, they did say they were feeling good uh, when they came into this competition, and uh, it really does show. Thank you for joining me here on Pitch 4. Uh, we are all finished here on Pitch 4. I would highly recommend that you switch over to Pitch 3 now for the Under-21 Women's Final, which is going to be Netherlands taking on home favourites Germany. Not one to miss, and I will see you shortly.